Felix Makoka should be off the screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's a statement of intent. <laughs> well, when I get to the Soviet Navy, we'll get there <laughs> pretty quick. Oh, there's a lot of good old Soviet Navy stories. Uh, I'm working on a video at the moment. It's not coming out for another week or two because the sponsor wants it in March. Yeah. Um, and it's about the rebuilding of the Soviet fleet during the 20s and 30s in the Black Sea. <laughs> All I'm saying is try putting 8-inch guns on a hull that can't handle 6-inch guns. Mm. Oh boy. Can't wait. Yeah, I'm going to talk about it later, but the ship's the Krasny Kavkaz. Uh-huh. And Probably don't get me started on their submarine fleet. Oh my <laughs> goodness. I haven't even touched on that. Oh, that's... Well, tonight, anyway. That's where things get really silly. That's... Are we that's... live? Oh god, we are live. We are indeed oh, live. The, peop- the people can hear me? Well, it's a good thing I didn't say anything inappropriate. Oh god. Only wankers. No, we're live. Are we now? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's going to be something. I just pinged my server. Uh, let me uh, let me go to YouTube community tab. Yes. Yes, indeed. The people. And for all of our US followers, welcome. Happy birthday. Get a coffee. Uh, <laughs> you're just. I have a morning a lot coffee. Of people with who were asleep thirty seconds ago. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I just pinged my uh, server saying I'm awake. You have to be as well. Poor <laughs> Fado <laughs> just got pinged like three times. I was going to say, <laughs> how many people on your server are going to go? Fuck sake! Um, right, I'm I'm expecting a uh, a drop off in uh, users in my server after this one, but that's okay. Yeah, well, you know, it happens. Right. See, I have a I have a dedicated role on my server for stupid people. They tend to get bullied out pretty quickly. The role is titled New Zealand. Oof. Ooh, wow. That's- <laughs> <laughs> well, I've That's seen so my server my server's green and gold. It's very Australian, so I've I've called the stupid people New Zealand. <laughs> So New Zealand actually exists because, like, every time I see a map, I have to wonder, like, is that island going to be there or not? It shouldn't be there. Uh, no, that's true. That's that's a good one. Yeah, quite a lot of maps is not there. Yeah, sad time. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Um... <laughs> <laughs> right. I love my Anzac Bros. Just saying. Oh yeah. T-34 better be Smikalka. Well, I mean... Has anyone actually picked the T-34? We'll find... We'll find it's not yeah, no, we're doing a deep dive. Yeah, yeah we're going on with this. We are, we are not... We are not basic. <laughs> we're going hard in the paint. Sure. Oh, yeah, sure. Anyone who's here is getting, um, from my channel too, is going to get a little sneak peek into the next Soviet naval video I'm making with one of my picks. Oh, rock and roll. Yeah, okay.
we have uh, we have done this before as well on Thrasher's channel. So if you haven't watched the original, it is on Thrasher's channel, and it's it's pretty damn awesome. And I'm imagining we will probably do this again. Oh yeah, definitely. We've got a whole we've got a whole. Is the sound, the sound gone? is gone. My wife will knock on my door if the sound is gone. Just wait. <laughs> Uh oh. Is it broken? Oh no. Uh she said it was for a sec, but it's back now. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Wasn't that vaguely way? promising? Okay. I'm not sure so, about that one. Hello, hello. So what we're saying is Soviet sound. Sound is back. We're good. Sound is um, back. Uh so, so just just to be absolutely clear, uh, it has to be a vehicle, but it can be a prototype, um, and we might argue about whether or not other stuff should be included. Um, but that's that's the, that's the, that's the only rule today. So, we're good to go for all the weird, and wonderful shit. Yes, um, and it's well, Soviet Union. There's a lot of weird and wonderful shit to be had. I, I, I would like to start us off with the man, the myth, the legend that we all briefly discussed. Well, why don't you do that? Why don't you kick it off? Why don't you lead us all in song? Needs no introduction. Oh, look at that. Look at it. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Oh. Yes. Peak Melvin. Yes. 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 Can I not see what's going on here? What, what? I don't see it on the screen. Do we see it on the screen? So, is it there? on the screen. Oh, oh, it, is. oh it is. It is there. Uh, it's in the thing. Oh, there it is. There it is! There it is! Wait, oh no! No! No, technical difficulties! Oh, what have you done? I don't know! Oh god. How does this work? How does any of this work? What have you done? You're there sharing we go. everything now. There we so, go. You see? Uh, Scar. No, mate. No, mate. It, swap, swap back to the uh, this presentation. Is, he, here. That's our view. We we, we we give you the uh, the best experience you can can here on this there. channel. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're, 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 we're trying our best. I didn't want to host it. I wanted someone else to have to handle the thing. <laughs> because, oh, no. Because, like, I'm not... I don't use PowerPoint. <laughs> there we go. You got it. You got it. You're Object there. 279. It does not need an introduction. It is sub-zero. There yeah. is no argument about it. It is just perfect in every way. Ice so, oh, what, what we have... Ice cold. So yeah, what what we have with this, we have four tra oh. tracks being driven through some ridiculous like setup of planetary gears. We have a one hundred and thirty millimeter gun because big is good, and the bizarre UFO shape was designed to deflect the blast from tactical nuclear weapons, whether it was. Would work or not, we'll never know. <laughs> of course, you know, we, we, we are told that it would have worked fantastically. It's incredible. Uh, it would have simply carved through the nuclear shock blast <laughs> like a hot knife through butter, apparently. It would have reached the ride um, in two days. <laughs> let's be honest. In, in, in all honesty, yeah, no, it, 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 in fact, it would have well. surfed on, on the nuclear blast <laughs> shock wave. Uh, say, like, yeah, like yeah, some kind of oversized turret. longboard. <laughs> they've just, they've just developed a turret which flies better. Is what they've done. Yeah, there. but look at it though. <laughs> look at it. Like it's easily sub zero. It's just so cool. Completely ridiculous. Literally, completely impractical. But literally anything that tries to hit it will just deflect off and like, you know, ricochet off into another dimension. I it's love just... it so much. Yeah, it's silly. It's a it's yeah. a it's a silly vehicle. It's a silly vehicle, but it's but it's incredible. And there's no, there's no dissent. There's no discussion chat. That is Sub Zero. That is our benchmark <laughs> vehicle. It is just Sub Zero, just because how ridiculous it is. But <sighs> but we now have to start our discussions. So who wants take to go first? Take the turret off. If you take the turret off, you could make an amazing uh, spa bath out of that. Yo, for real though, like you could, yeah. you know those like, it's not shape. you know those fucking like beach, those like beach buggies that you know that, that yes, that, that tourists fucking ride around in like places like a beach. You know that, you know the ones that are like 
those tour bus things, like those bars you see that are driven by bicycles. You know what I mean? You can, if you could mm. like take the turret and all the guns and sh- take all that out and just have like a jacuzzi bar that's driven around a beach or something, like this would right? be amazing. Like this would be cool. But you know, they've basically made a hot tub, is what you're saying. Yeah, these, yes. they've, they've made uh, an armored uh, hot tub. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hot but, tub gulag uh, machine. Yeah, but we need to. <laughs> but we need to. Uh, we need to pick our first vehicle. So who wants to go first? Uh, I have something lined up. Where am I dropping this? Um, so if you go into the if you go into the uh, chat and you and you click on the link there, you'll be able to just uh, it into the presentation. Yes. Yes. Got it. Right Fantastic. Uh, right. I'm just hoping it updates in present mode because if it doesn't, then we're up shit creek. creek. <laughs> yeah, we are. It works. Worst comes to worst, just escape and then full screen it every time. Okay. Oh boy. Uh, uh, now it's opening. It's opening. We, uh, uh, we, 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 give, we give we give the Soviets a lot of shit on this show, uh, for, for for good reason. I think you know. There's there's a lot of things. Believe it or not, that the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics didn't do all that well. If it can believe, like you know, if, if it can be believed, just like you know, bear, bear with me on that. But to give some of the Soviet Union the uh, uh, the small amount of praise it does deserve, uh, they did invent the technical. So, well, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh my god okay well yeah that's valid oh good lord where do we put oh, that i mean oh. so yeah this is this is just one of a great lineage of gas trucks what they slapped an aa gun on yeah they, uh, 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 starting a great and long tradition that survives to this day if you count the Toyota Hilux. Why are my Steam notifications? This is scuff! So just share... Um, Marky, just, just share the uh, the Discord stream. Yeah. Yeah, that works. Just do that, yeah. That's why I've got it that way. You just share on there and then I, I control it from the same. Ah, uh, fuck it. I wouldn't say that's Smikalka, per se, because it I don't know. Oh, it, it works. No. I mean, it does. It does work. Uh, uh, I mean, how, how are we? How are we grading it's not some zero? Definitely no, it's, it's not some zero. zero. Um, I'd say in the in the dead center because that should just be like the the benchmark of like. But it, it is. Works, but it's not. It is quite literally Smakalka though. It. Mm, it's the it's definition of Smakalka. They literally it's just bolted a, an AA gun on the back of a truck. Is yeah. it an example of Smakalka that works? Yes. Mm. I'm going to stick it right in the middle. It's going to stick on that star. I think it belongs in the middle. Yeah, it's, like it's, something that goes in the middle is something that works, but isn't necessarily amazing. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just like it's a gun yeah. on a truck. It's a like what? It's it's a truck with a with a gun. It's, it's basically not, a technical. It's, it's not the object, which is a C technical, but it's not bad. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, I'd drive it. Um, I mean, so, cool. so Bim, when did they make this? It's a I mean, like, I don't, I don't, I presume from 1930 to 1962 or something. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, probably from like, the, probably it lot, seems lot, like one lot, of the lot, things lot. that they could have just made forever. Coming to Ukraine soon. <laughs> yeah. Actually, yes, indeed. Give it out there already. I mean, let's be, real here. Let, let's be real here. Actually, streaming the Discord was probably the best idea because now they can see who's talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, good good not a bad idea, to be honest. Yeah, that was why I did it in the first place. I was a bit confused as to why you were sharing the presentation, but there we go. Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Well, I'm an idiot. That's okay. I, I have never been good at, at streaming anyway. <laughs> But look at uh, if that you, if thing. You have a YouTube experience where somebody fucks a stream up. You're doing it wrong. Um, yeah, no, like I am. I am entering my. VTuber yeah, no, like part 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 of YouTube stream experience 
uh, is making fun of the streamer when they fuck up the stream. That's like, yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a rite of passage. Right. So we um, have the Gaz AA. So we've got... There we go. Well, I mean, that's that's the thing, though. You you say the Gaz AA it was the name of the normal truck. That was just the name of the model of the truck. So there's... I, I, I don't actually know what the... So, specific suffix is on the end that denotes it's the one with the gun on it. So is it the Gaz A A A A? So it's the Gaz A. Gaz A. No, I believe. I believe actually, I don't think it's that specific variant. But the the one that had uh, four water cooled machine guns on it instead of a larger cannon. Uh, that was the Gaz A A A. So yeah. in it's a way. The Nathan Yes. I'm so gonna guess. Ah! <laughs> so Thresh will understand this. It's the Nathan Lyon mobile. Yeah. I, well, I, yeah. I was gonna go with he must, 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 but it's just a, uh, an England footballer from the 90s. Exactly. Uh, with the drink problem. Um, okay, so look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna steal a thing. Um, so, I'm gonna just go and put this in here. So, this is obviously the MiG-25. Right? Sub-zero. Um, Sub Sub-zero. I mean, is no. it, though, is no. it really... This is a touch... This, this should be made of titanium, but they didn't have any, so they made it out of steel. They put yeah, but basically... It, cool. they, it does look cool, uh, but they just basically shoved two massive engines on the back, and up to that point, it's pretty cool, but it got so hot that it would quite regularly melt in flight, which is not ideal. And then... Of course, what it did is it provoked the West into looking at that and going, well, we need a faster fighter, and that's essentially where the F-15 came from, which is just so much better. So, I, I don't think I it's quite... I think with best. You see... Bear with, because whatever you think of that, there is, there is however, um, a, a, variant, a variant of it that is absolutely, unquestionably sub-zero, which is they ran out of money in the 90s and so they built this, or they were going to build this, which is an airliner based off the same chassis. Yeah, uh, okay. nice. it's, 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 a, it's yeah. a Learjet. Um, what about that? With a MiG twenty five back, and that's just <laughs> fucking awesome. Okay, yeah, look, that that wins. That wins. Like that, just, that just wins. Like there's, there's like there's, there's, there's no, yeah. there's no debating that. There's no discussion no, there's of not. that. Like that is sub zero yeah. as fuck. Like how, like you, you're like. Elon Musk the third or whatever, and you're like, oh, I need to get to my business meeting in so and so. Well, I guess I'll just hop in my business jet MiG twenty five. POV Taylor Swift forgot her phone on the other side of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, could you imagine how banging the e the ears to her would be if she went from show to show in the fucking <laughs> MiG twenty five? The silver like. Yeah, the silver like MiG twenty five with an extended nose, just like <laughs> screeching across the sky. Oh, that'd be ice cold, man. With just Swift written on the side of it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Before we get to, before we get too enamored with this, I should point out that there were a couple of reasons that they didn't build it. One of them was that they realized that if you were a passenger, in that, there's, there's no, <laughs> there's no way to put any sound baffling in it. So what, you would literally not be able to hear yourself breathe. I mean, it, it would be so loud, you wouldn't know what the fuck had happened to you. You would get off that jet deaf as a post. And the other reason that they didn't build it was because they realized there was going to be a resonance in the in the long body bit. So there was a really excellent chance that at about Mac 2, it would just disintegrate in the air. Which it would snap in half. Never stop the rush, it would but, snap in half. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. To, to be yeah, fair... To be fair, they built the TU-144 and you had to scream at each other to hear each other in that thing as well. <laughs> yes, true, true. <laughs> okay, you see, the thing is, I was going along a similar thought process to you, Thrasher. Not so much the business jet version, but I wanted to bring in this bad boy. Ah. Uh, it should be a PNG. Oh, is that the early model? Oh, yeah, that's the prototype. I, I, I will, I will quickly PNGify this. All right, everybody, throw down your MiG twenty fives. We all yeah, have yeah, one. Yeah, we all have I one. Don't <laughs> throw them in. Throw them in. Okay, all MiG twenty fives, one on top of the other, please. <laughs> we will start the uh, MiG twenty five centipede. 
Oh, See, no. I, I feel like it should just send ah. a back across the Smacal Cup. Feed her. No, 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 no. You see, the MiG-25 that I have on screen there, which I will save as a PNG now, because, again, this is scuff number four, ladies and gentlemen. We're on a roll. You're doing uh, well. Oh, we're hanging in, bro. We're hanging in. We're, we're surviving. There you go. So this is the prototype, and it is literally called this the Yi-155. <laughs> the Yi... <laughs> Yeah. Has questionable yeah, opi- has questionable opinions <laughs> has questionable <laughs> opinions supports Donald Trump. Um, <laughs> mm. <laughs> the U one five five. Um, th- this thing is absolutely well. As uh, to quote one of the greatest pieces of modern classical music, uh, this shit is bananas. B a n a n a s. Um, it is mm. ridiculously fast. It still holds like four speed records, at, as well as altitude records as well. Because the prototype originally was tested as a photo reconnaissance version, and so it had all the armament and all the radars stripped out, and so it is literally just a stripped out MiG twenty five with the most amount of fuel and a set of cameras. And it goes through that fuel remarkably quickly. So this thing is just fast. Bro, it's, it's like, like a Soviet. Fast. It's like a Soviet English electric lightning. Yeah, it's yeah. speed. It is literally it's speed. Well, yeah, it's 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 a Soviet thing that's somewhere between lightning and, I guess, SR seventy one as well. If if I deign to compare. But where are the to, to quote Thresher, where are the bolted fuel tanks under the top of the fuselage, like God and yeah, King Intense? Yeah, I mean, nothing. You know, God and King Intense, you to put your fuel tanks on top of your wings. It's yeah, the because right if they're on top, the, the gravity will just push the fuel down. Exactly. Like, exactly. Yeah. And when you need to eject, you're going so fast, where normally it's a problem because you can't drop those. But when you're going that fast, they're just going to rip off anyway. So, you know, <laughs> use the fuel whilst you got it, right? Yeah. So, all in uh, all, according to the... According to everyone's favorite uh, source, Wikipedia, but it is taken from your friend Gordon's book, so I I do take it at its word. Uh, when this thing first flew, when the Yi one five five first flew, it had I shit you not twenty nine world records claimed. Wow! On its first on its first round of testing, like this thing is ridiculous, and it's sub zero. Like, it's Sub-Zero. Like, straight up Sub-Zero. Thank you, Military History Nerd. 100 Swedish Krona. Thank you very much. What are our thoughts on Sweden yes. finally getting the green light to join NATO? Outstanding. Finally. Merrier. Fucking Bosch. Yeah. Uh, I was actually chatting to a Swedish guy yesterday on online. Oh, and, I... uh, we're really excited about it. It's cool. I, I went into a deep oh. dive recently on the Swedish total defense plan, and um, those guys are fucking nuts. Dude, I oh yeah, no, like like the I mean I the the, the uh, STRV one hundred and three what we brought up last stream. I love it. The <laughs> thing is cool. The the uh, plan was like to use that in what I can only describe as a very aggressive defense. <laughs> like wrong it's thing. it's defense in almost all but all but name and like ultimate strategic goal. The plan was they were expecting the Soviets to land either in the south towards, like, uh, Malmö and that area, or Stockholm. They'd have, like, the bulk of the tank forces in those two areas. And as soon as they landed, just send the 103s in with uh, one out of ev- one uh, 103 in every brig- brigade was fitted with a dozer blade so that it could dig itself in and make a position. Yes, and the plan was for them to just race forward to immediately where the landing was, encamp in a position, and shoot until the Soviets weren't there anymore. Yes, I think. Yeah, make the horizon disappear. And like, it's just I, I, I know people give it crap, but the Gripen looks hot. It Dude, looks fantastic. Cool. All it, yeah, Swedish enough. fighters look amazing. They except do, for their, yeah. except for their first one. Except for their first one, the uh, Tonin. 
the the saw like cool. the saw like I can't remember the exact the barrel. The, the, yeah, the little fat the, barrel the, thing. The barrel. Is a bit yeah. Okay, yeah, the, but the their only like... combat service was <laughs> their only like full time front line service was as part of the UN mission to the Congo. Yeah, but it's yeah, cute. but I mean like. It's Sweden. They don't really have too many situations where the fighters end up fighting. It, it's all about aesthetics, man. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, you, with the one I, I like, I like the Tunin. No, 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 because you got the Draken. I mean, well, the yeah, Draken's yeah, another yeah, Draken. The, the, the Draken is a whole oh. level of cool. The, the, the Draken makes funny things happen in my pants, put it that way. Yeah, the <laughs> same thing as the Vigan. I love flying the Vigan in DCS when I say, because you just feel like even in a fucking video game simulation, the moment you key in an afterburner on one of those Swedish Cold War jets, it feels like someone's just drop kicked you in the back. It just goes the whoosh <laughs> away and it can reverse. It's got that, yeah, yeah, it's got that gated yes, afterburner I, 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 and you feel it just like boom, boom, boom <laughs> as, you, as you cross over. It's I, awesome. I hate. I, I, I hate to uh, distract people, but uh, we're supposed to be offering some l small level of praise to the Soviet Union in this stream. Uh, no, uh, here, have the Act 9. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, the, mm, the MiG-9, the my bad. Wow, I'm not awake. Yes. Oh, God. Oh, God, no. <laughs> yeah, no, never mind. No, forget what I said. Forget it. Okay, so <laughs> look, as as cool as it is, as cool as it is, uh, I'm going to make the uh, somewhat executive decision. I'm going to... Fuck off! Can't! Ah! There goes the stream. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to make the executive decision and remove these two oh. and oh. make it smaller. Wow. You just... Okay, well, you know, big moves. What's this communist bullshit? I know, this is communist bullshit. This is Stalinism. <laughs> This is Stalinism in action. Is what we got here. The, this this the, is exactly yeah, the, what Marco Rubio warned this, we, us about. We thought we thought, yeah. we thought that we'd all have an equal footing yeah. in this in this live stream, but uh, it turns out some people are more equal than others. Um, yeah, you're right. You see, as Fucking the as the party uh, general secretary, I do have to point out. <laughs> I do have to point out that under subsection B, paragraph four of the All Charter to the Soviets, um, I I can do whatever the fuck I want. Uh, and it, anyone who says otherwise, that bit from Parks and Rec. Uh, anyone who says otherwise is a counter-revolutionary fascist and probably in league with Trotsky as well. So, um, you know, that's you, know, you, know you know how that's go. You know, I don't make the rules, man. Uh, refer to my uh, refer to refer to my video in the horrible history of Russian fighter planes to find out what happens to uh, aviation engineers who do not tow the party line ladies and gentlemen and then refer to my space yeah then refer to my space race video to find out what happens to rocket engineers who don't follow the party line it's all about airbrushing and photos hey guys i i don't make the rules i don't make the rules guys please refer to my rule book yes exactly exactly yep i wrote and then had the author shot um for stealing my ideas uh, and then you're gonna uh, have to go through and uh, change the uh, thumbnail for this video and just like erase all of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just gonna put X's over our eyes. <laughs> <Black. laughs> uh, nah. How do you and all like so Trump it's, it's, it's just an an anarchy, anarchy redubbing us in like his like trying to do really bad impressions of us? <laughs> and what he needs to do is have ice pick sticking out of all of our heads. Yeah. Okay, so yes. now we need to hear Pac Man, or we need to have uh, Anamarchy like do an impression of all of us, like right now. Well, hello there, fellow Americans. Um, yeah, look, <laughs> you talk amongst Wait, yourselves. Wait, 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 my dinner has just chat. arrived. Uh, well, why, does, why does why why is your Falcon voice Obama? <laughs> yeah. Now, 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 let me be clear. Um, don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Don't boo. Vote. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, Sorry. Falcon doesn't remind uh, you of Obama. So, uh, so, so look. If, if whilst we're waiting for Marcus to come back in, I'm going to quickly because yep, this is very can. aviation heavy. So, sorry. Whilst Obama goes to cook his supper, <laughs> um, I'm just going to quickly share a thing with you here. So this, this here, is the uh, Soyuz capsule. Um, that, oh God! Oh no! That came back down through the atmosphere uh, with three dead cosmonauts on board. I knew what, what that was. was. Wasn't that Soyuz? Uh, what happened? Or, with the, no. the, 
as it was re-entering, it lost um, it, it lost pressurization basically, and and killed everybody inside, boiled their blood pretty instantly. Um, now the reason that that happened was because they originally the Soyuz capsule was a two-man capsule, and then when the Apollo program launched successfully. Uh, the Soviet Union shit themselves and realized that the Americans had got three people into space, not two. And so they just moved everything and put an extra seat in, which was basically kind of a jump seat. They sort of wedged it in the back. The capsule was not big enough to have three people in it, never mind do anything in it. So once you were in, you were in, and there was absolutely no way to do anything else about it. So it's literally um, a three-man, two-man capsule. And it's completely shit. Uh, and it's it's so it's Do you want to know yeah, the best so part? Be... Go on. It's still in use today. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I was going to say it, it. It is still using it today. Uh, they have at least sorted the seals out, but its its fundamental design is completely flawed. Um, and they keep launching them. So, so we had it. we have a oh, comment saying one. the the glorious pressure cooker. Yeah. And that's kind of not, yes. a kind of yeah. a misnomer because it lost all of its pressure on the way down. <laughs> uh, so uh, another thing about the Soyuz, right, is because as Thresher said, it's so compact. The only way the commander can actually press the buttons is by having a poker stick. Oh, I forgot oh. about that. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god! You can see it on videos we're, of the commander we're, with we're a poker few... stick. <laughs> we're Futurama okay, that, thing yeah. longering. This is this really <laughs> what would? Oh my god. <laughs> I'd, I'd say let's put that on the line between Smikalka and Experimental because that's that's All right. bad. It works. And the thing is, pro Z Twithead peoples will always say, well, it's the most successful capsule ever. It's got the best safety record. One, no, it doesn't anymore because Dragon has never had an incident where someone's died and neither did Gemini. And uh, technically, if you want to go into it, the Apollo Basically. Block 2 capsule never had anybody die in it. The it Block didn't, 1 yes. Didn't, of course, but... But the oh, thing is, but... it's only successful as it is because it's the only thing they have. Yes. Yeah, the best part is the Chinese yeah. one and the Indian one is kind of based off it. Yeah, because you know rockets are worth money and uh, they've got cash. So, so you mm -hmm. know, there we are. But um, yeah, if, if you go on an American rocket these days, you quite literally sit in a very large seat in a pod that's designed for at least eight people in a in a pinch, and you have a seat that has been 3D printed to match your body in a suit that's been 3D printed for you, and you have this nice big armrest, you have all these touch screens in front of you, and then you get into the Soviet rock and it's hold pointer, press button, you cannot move. <laughs> yeah. Better uh, times been have been had, and when you're considering that better times have been had in space... You know, you you start worrying about uh, about maybe the safety record of your own situation. Yuri Gagarin had oh, more arm room, put it that way. Yeah, yeah which is kind of and, fucked yeah. up when you think about it. <laughs> and Yuri Gagarin. Um, so, uh, anyway, yeah. So that that's that that that's so, not going uh, right. anywhere anywhere right of the middle. Um, I will say this capsule probably is a little bit better than the Voskhod capsule which was kind of like their gemini um they took a vostok capsule and just shoved a second seat <laughs> into it yeah and they did that, was a, that was a that was a menace completely manual did yeah. you i'm pretty sure from memory yuri had to be, um use an ejection seat to get out of his capsule because so they always yeah that was it yeah yeah that was it yeah that was normal yeah, by design yeah yeah i don't know why um, they would just... go that route but whatever just, so now that I'm just back, quickly. I just want to point out that we did gloss over the MiG nine. I, yes, we did. I was about to say, I was it. about to say, for, for the for the benefit of people in the audience who might not know, I think we should cover the MiG nine. All right. Go on, so then. there is a great documentary done by Paper Skies on the MiG nine, Ooh. but TLDR: Imagine a plane rushed into production to make a parade. Didn't have a functioning gun. Literally all it could do was fire its engines up and barely fly. Now, any planes that did actually have the ability to fire its gun, the gun is immediately in front of the intake. And gases from a cannon firing have a nasty habit of flaming out engines. Um, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. gun gas immediately in front of it gets sucked in, kills your engines, you're, you're done like dinner. Now... Even if you're able to land and you have engines going, a lot of the time, 
they would just shut the engines off and glide in because the engines were just so poor responding that it was it was just it was a shit box okay like the only reason the soviets ended up having a good engine uh for later models is because uh the rolls royce company was like yeah sure you know we'll we'll give you guys some some of our prototype engines for for some of our aircraft and uh then the mig 15 came around and the mig 9 was uh was shelved forever and nobody ever talks about it and no one ever came yeah out. so the the re one of the reasons why the engines were so uh shit was because uh uninspected installment of a uh, hard fascist series of shit nazi kit um <laughs> the the uh, if you hover over the uh rd20 axial flow turbojet engine on the mig 9's wikipedia page uh you will click that link and see that it takes you to the wikipedia page for the bmw 003 the See, ME262's engine. Well, well oh, no, hang on. It was the ME262's proposed engine. Oh, okay. oh, yes, of course. Sorry, yes. But either way... Um, oh, oh, even better! Even better! Uh, it was also proposed in the Heinkel uh, HE162. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> boy oh boy oh dear so yes uh this this is it's the big nine was bad in every way there is nothing redeeming about it like there i i can't imagine anything it had shit visibility it could barely fly couldn't fire its guns without like literally killing itself um yeah so what you're saying it's basically a a frenchman just really, really self-loathing and sad. I mean, I didn't say that, but you know, but one could draw that conclusion. I have French friends. I could say that joke. <laughs> <laughs> you used to have French friends until about thirty seconds ago. <laughs> Damn, Damn. <laughs> got him. Okay. Well, as I mentioned to you, my uh, best French friend's a woman, so she'll probably laugh at that joke. So who's, I don't know who's going people, to? unfortunately. It's your go, mate. Go on. Or oh, fortunately, apparently, it's mine. Okay, in which case. In keeping with the theme, I'd like to follow on from the parade fighter. Oh boy. Oh, no. <laughs> Is this going to be a parade tank? I, 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 I think I know what this might be. I couldn't make a PNG of it, so if someone wants to be more creative, I'm sorry. I... Wait, that's disturbing already. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Carmel Dancing came out of my playlist. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> boys and girls, I present to you. You knew it was coming. If you've watched my video, you would expect it. Ladies and gentlemen, the Sylvansky IS I220. Ah, oh, it's it like is. a deform GB. Mm, welcome to the worst airplane ever made. In fact, so, I love it. so much so that it's like, I'm going to put it like right at the bottom, buried half off screen, because like it's like as literally as far <laughs> as it can go. Like, this is the worst aeroplane ever, ever to come into existence. Even dreams at this point, I swear. Mm-hmm. Well, um,. Just, just the going off the, 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 yes, it is dog shit. It is, it is terrible. Paul but like, is right there. Do, do you like maybe, maybe the right flyer? Like maybe, maybe we can, <laughs> we can, you know, the right flyer. Like, I'm, 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 here we go. Bolton Paul defy it. Sylvansky is dog fight. Oh, it's going to be long. It's going to take a very, very long time. <laughs> The Bolton I mean, Paul Defiant. So that's your flag flag the, the Bolton Paul Defiant will absolutely wipe the floor with the Sylvansky IS, and it won't even be a contest. Yeah, dude, beat it into the ground. Here we go. Mm-hmm. DCS Defiant win. I'm going to put it so. Oh it can see yeah, it. no. The so what? Okay, because I did watch your video, Anamaki. Uh, this was too heavy. Too underpowered. They designed it without putting any guns on it. So then, when they put the 
those on, it was even more overweight. It's the other way around. Uh, it was designed... the other way around. The, it was overweight already, so the only way they could get it to fly was to take the guns off. Oh, right. <laughs> of course. I love the Fantastic. They, they, they shaved a few inches off the propeller by sawing it off, which is yes. always a good sign. <laughs> yes. But proper, proper craftsman. Uh, which, like, that's, uh, they, they missed that's just a thing of basic... That's just a thing of basic geometry. Like mm. that's like you get the you get the, the 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 acute angle from like the small point at the back of the plane, and you have the vertical bit from the. That's just that's fucking Pythagoras. How they <laughs> fuck that up? Well, I'm just saying it's very People's Republic of Yorkshire to grab a saw. And go, all right, we'll cut it off. No, okay. So you see the thing. Yeah, is- well, no, order. no, no, no! I will not take such slander. We would do better. We would do things proper up here. Uh, <laughs> uh, the auctionmen have better craftsmanship than the people who built this thing. Um, uh, except they, they, they don't do any. They don't do any work. They're better craftsmen. They don't do any work because they're all on strike. Um, Heck, how many were built? I've got, I've got one next. Um, how many were built? Two. <laughs> Two. Yeah. Good. Three. Which is right. three too many. Three too many. Okay, so to, do, to give you Two the idea, cells fighting for fourth place. All right, let's give let's give the quick the quick version of this. So basically, there was a competition between all the fighter designers to create the plane. Uh, Mikoyan, uh, Artyom Mikoyan, uh, his brother Anastas Mikoyan was high up on the Politburo, and so he was angling to get the MIG project. His MIG project started. Polikarpov, he was working for Polikarpov though, so he couldn't do it. So Polikarpov was in the running, uh, as was Yakovlev, as was Lavoshkin, Gorodbunov, and Gudkov in their design bureau. They may be making a reoccurring appearance on this list. <laughs> um, and <laughs> and this guy comes up because he's best mates with Kaganovich. The Defense Minister for Aircraft Procurement at the time. Uh, Alexander Sylvansky basically just graduated from, from SAGI, I think. It's the Moscow Aviation Institute. I think it's SAGI or Moscow Aviation Institute. Uh, same thing. Not sure. It's all a mess. Point is, he just graduated. He goes up to his boss and he's like, hey, I want to build the plane. And he's like, I'm <laughs> best mates with Stalin. I'll set you up. I'll hook you up with this contract. So he goes out and he needs to build a design bureau. However, besides Kaganovich, he doesn't have any backers. He doesn't have any experience. This is literally his first ever project in the aviation industry. So what does he do? He goes up and gets all the engineers from all the defunct design bureaus, like the Gringorovich design bureau, for example. The guys who were working with um, uh, the guy, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, the guy who was putting ridiculous recordless rifles on everything, right? When Gordovich had just finished up had just finished up working because the recoilless rifle projects hadn't worked and Polikarpov's designs was better. So he poached all of their designers, the guys who were building the massive cannons and putting them on planes, and he rounds them up along with a bunch of other defunct design bureaus and like, right, we've got a design bureau now. He sets it up in a shed, uh like a couple hours drive outside of Moscow on an airfield, and they get to work. And yes, you've heard part of the story already. But they built and designed the thing. Alexander Sylvansky had literally almost nothing to do with the project. He has absolutely nothing to do with it. Like, absolutely nothing. Like no- his, his, whole, his whole thing, as I understand it, like, the only talent he had was networking. Yes. Was, like, you know, getting, getting people on his side. He... He he's the little dicky of like the 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 Soviet air industry in the nineteen thirties. Uh, MC Leftwood Sleeping Penis. Yes. Um. <laughs> yeah, there's a reference for you. Uh, fuck them all. Uh, um. Anyway. So. Moving on. Sylvansky. I have a. Oh, yes, goes out and <laughs> goes out and gets this contract, and then immediately fucks off and goes back to Moscow. And keeps kissing us and tells his head designer, Ivan Lemyshev, just build the thing. Um, but, well, they're using a bunch of different parts. They haven't got the right engine. They design the thing expecting to get a new engine that doesn't arrive, so they have to use an old engine 
The older engine doesn't fit the mounts, so it fucks up the aerodynamics. Um, they get the measurements of the engine, the propeller, wrong, and so the propeller digs into the ground. Because The reason it's digging into the ground is because they got the gear length measurements wrong, and because the gear length measurements are, all, are wrong, the gear doesn't actually retract inside the wheel well fully. It jams, so they can't retract the landing gear either. It's too heavy. The aerodynamic profile is completely ridiculously fat. Fatter than me, and that's saying something. And so all of this boils down to an aircraft that is twice as heavy as it should be. And the only way they could get it to fly is by taking the guns out and half the and only loading half the fuel. And then somehow getting it airborne. They get the propeller to clear the ground by sawing the tips of the propeller off. And they sold the aerodynamics of the engine mounts by literally hammering it down. Like they grabbed Whoa, that hammer Maui, and sledged hammered it, sledge hammered it down, until eventually they. Obligatory, obligatory, Jeremy Clarkson. Yes, yes, my <laughs> genius yeah. is almost frightening. And so they they fly. It only flew twice. Mm -hmm. twice again, imagine. sort of in in spirit, just because he's been mentioned. Imagining the plane like bouncing along the runway, struggling to take off. Jeremy Clarkson inside, just going. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot of poo coming out. <laughs> uh, I mean, it basically, says, what you're saying there, really, after that summary, is is, is it's the TSR two of the Soviet era. Oh, don't you say, don't you dare say bad things about the TSR two. The well, TSR two at least really looked bad. cool. And it actually um, flew because that's the I, end of the story. Um, <laughs> I have a, uh, I have one for experimental that we can actually get one in the pod now. Oh dear. Mm. So. I'm making a video on this, so I won't go into it too deeply. Why is that not uploading? Come on. Why is it not? Oh, there we go. So, uh, everyone knows what the state of the Soviet, uh, the SARS Navy was after, um, we'll just say their little anime adventure in 1905. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't exist. Uh, they actually did quite a good job rebuilding their Navy, uh, during World, up to World War One, and a part of that was building a bunch of cruisers. Oh. Four in the Black Sea, four in the Baltic. You were saying something, Hathrasha? No, sorry, Matt, I couldn't see it, but I've got it now. We're good. Oh, yeah. Ooh, um, we can't really hear you. I, I can't, anyway. Yes, you're yeah. going very quiet all of a sudden. Yeah. Is that better? Ah, okay. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, anyway, as, as, the, as we all know, bad things happen in 1914. Um, and oh. very bad things happen... Uh, for the next three years, if you're if you're Russian or any kind of minority who has been brutally suppressed by the Tsar, um, oh, yeah. so the, the four ships being built in Mykolaiv in Ukraine, kind of well, the two that are able to float get captured by the Germans, then they get handed over to the Entente, then they get handed over to the Whites, and they get then they're sort of just sitting in the harbor for a while, covered in weeds and so rusty they can't move. They're basically islands. And the Soviets come along in the 20s going, we need to rebuild our fleet. That's perfect. Put eight-inch guns on it. <laughs> it's, smaller than a, it's smaller than a British light cruiser from the same period. Just mm, for perspective. That smaller makes than it almost a destroyer at that point. Yeah, yeah. So British light cruisers uh, in the 20s, the Leanders, are effectively equivalent to late war Allied Navy destroyers in World War II. Like, the, it's, it's, yeah. Um, Real. So the Soviet yeah, solution. That. How, high that crow, how high that crow's nest is? It's mm. it's so high compared to the rest of the superstructure. But that's it's the best part. Immediately. That's the best part, right? So the ship's not actually strong enough to hold twin eight-inch guns because it will actually fall in on itself. Right. So they put single-barrel seven-point-five-inch guns on there, but they want to make them more impressive than the British ones. So they overcharge them with every single round. It's designed to be oh, purposefully overcharged. No. So. Would oh, you consider, no. so for equivalence sake, the, the British gun of the same calibre on the Hawkins class cruiser could fire 624 round, full charge rounds before the barrel would need to be replaced. Mm -hmm. Krasny Cove cars could fire 25. Oh my god! Yeah. Mm. So it's tidy, it's got no armour, it's boilers of crap. It kind of looks nice though, I will give it that. But the best so part was... It's it's all the propaganda saying how strong the Soviet Navy is, and they sent it overseas like they were proud of it, saying, "Look how strong we are." Soviet oh, strong, dear. 
It's staying an experimental because um, it looks nice. It doesn't look horrific, but it is. Yeah, fine, it's one of those fine. things where it's like very deceptively normal looking. But like the best part is that superstructure is not natural. They couldn't actually fit the original superstructure, so they just sort of made one and put it on there. That lighter color of sheeting you can see is just really, really thin sheet metal that they've bolted onto it. It's very hard to see how it could go wrong, really. Honestly, anyway, yeah. the most Soviet thing I've heard in a while. It, it's, it's beautiful in every way, and it nearly blew up in World War II, and the only way it didn't blow up was by having one of the crewmen, because he couldn't actually get the powder bags overboard, because no one had <laughs> thought about a way to, you know, throw flaming shit overboard, because it was so heavy. There was no mechanical things. It was, you will manhandle the 7.5-inch round of the bag into the gun. He kind of had to put out the fire by throwing his body on it. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Um, it's the Soviet Navy. Yay! Mm. Red caucuses. <laughs> but that's, oh. yeah, I love it. Oh, God. Uh, we'll Russian, get to the battleships later. <laughs> the Russian Navy really is just one of those things where you're just like, Christ. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's like, never just... been normal. It's, it's always been like one of those things where it's like, and you're still afloat? Even now. They are the only yeah, like, the... the Because even the, 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 the battleships they had in the, in the Black Sea are... I mean, the, 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 the Russian dreadnoughts are very, very strange. <laughs> well, while they we're are... on to it, it was on my list anyway, so let's put a Russian dreadnought in Smakalka. Or a Soviet one. This is the. I think this is the Oktobratskia Revolutsia. No. So I'll just. Th I'll yes. throw it in Smokalka. Well, <laughs> hell of a what it was... The superstructure okay, almost looks so... like Japanese, but like even more unstable. Look, I'll just make it bigger so we can all see it for a while. <laughs> so yeah, the 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 dreadnought. I mean, dreadnoughts were sort of like a a, a fascinating thing on the part of sort of global trends in shipmaking anyway. Just sort of everyone suddenly deciding that we all need to make guns with lots of armor and lots of guns and big guns and we just need to design them and make them however we can to get as many big guns and armor and as most guns as possible. And mm. Is that the Soviet response was to have not actually very big guns, so they're twelve inch, which yes, um, is a big gun, but they're by by dreadnought standards and especially sort of um, later dreadnought standards, that's not very big. Um, but yeah, it has twelve of them from memory as well. The Soviets had the sorry, the Russians, the Russian Empire had seven dreadnoughts. One was under construction. Mostly these are all built in Mykolaiv in Ukraine and other southern shipyards. Uh, four of them are of one class, three of them of another class, and then two of them of something else. Anyway, two of them don't get finished properly. One of them gets yes, captured on the there's, stocks. There's the, I'm trying to remember, there's the Gangut class, which I'm yeah. pretty sure all the Ganguts got finished. Then there's the then there's the Imperatrice Maria class. Yes. Which I think they only built one or two of. They and built then there's two. A... Right, okay. And then there's a one off ship. The Nikolai. Called the, the Nikolai, which yeah. is like techni on paper the best one, but yeah, they never finished it. So, but, you know what? Yeah. So, I hate to interject here, but is that funnel, that, that forward funnel, like, bending out of the yes. ass end of the uh, superstructure. Well, so, so they couldn't fit the modern superstructure for the rebuild in World War II on the ship properly, so they just sort of made the funnel bend outwards over it, over the second turret. That's I disgusting. I can't see how that could go wrong. I mean, that second turret there is it's uh, so well placed, it can so easily shoot so of, oh, wait, no. <laughs> of the Russian dreadnoughts, right, you've got Imperatia Maya, which blows up randomly in port. Um, no one can figure out why. No one still has really figured out why. We think Fantastic. maybe it was a coal fire West, bunker. Western, Western Traces. Western Traces. Yes, Western well, Traces. Western Traces, yes. Western um, Traces, yeah. The one of them, I can't remember the name, ends up in uh, Tunisia with Wrangell's White Fleet, and the French get so sick of it being there after 20 years that they sell it for scrap metal. Um, three of them stay in the Soviet Union and get rebuilt. There's the October Revolution, which is that one. There's the Marat, Marat which is in Leningrad and is blowing up on the second day of the war, basically. Uh, by uh, Hans-Ulrich Rudel, certified, yeah. certified asshole. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, and then you've got the Parish Parish Kaya Kamuna, which is the one in the Black Sea, which is just sort of... It's got a crane on it that's bigger than the entire superstructure on that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I also, like, I understand, like, the whole thing was they were naming it uh, their ship after, like, you know, propagandistic things. Nonetheless, I find it so... It's just sort of lightly entertaining that there is a Soviet ship called the Paris Commune. I know, it's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's great. What's not to like? Um, look, so, so I'm conscious that it's, it's four in the morning for Falcon. Uh, so, pal, do you want to do you want to go next? Sure. Um, let's see. What do I have in my box of tricks here? Um, I'm, oh, I'm waiting on bated breath here. I, I am expecting great. The most things. American. The most American. Oh, oh, oh yeah, no! Baby. Oh no! Oh, yeah. What? <laughs> The TU4 that's, ball. That's a good curveball. Oh, that's an excellent curveball. Because where do we put this? Where do we put that? You can't, we can't it's say it's bad. It's an American bad. bomber. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's exactly. A, yeah. The, B-29, the B-29 is Sub-Zero. But that's it not is. a B-29. It's a shittily it made backdoor shed B-29. It, it's, so, it still says Boeing on it, though. They even <laughs> copied they a camera that was too. hanging inside of one of the B-29s just for shits and giggles because they wanted to make it, like, accurate down to the down to the it, bolt. It's fucking the riveting rudder was crap. pedals. It's rudder pedals have Boeing written on it. <laughs> yeah, so the T-4 like. bowl, for anybody who doesn't know, there were four B-29s that landed in um, the Soviet Union during World War II. Uh, they were shot up by the Japanese and whatnot, and they, they diverted, to, uh, diverted to Russia. And they were taken, and, you know, the crew were allowed to return back to the States and all that. But the bombers were disassembled and reverse engineered to make a modern, you know, Soviet bomber. And the only real difference between the Tu-4 and the B-29s was that their turrets had 23 millimeters in them instead of 50 cals. I can't remember. Did, did the um, Soviets reverse engineer the R-2800s as well? Like, the engines? I'm pretty sure they did. Yeah, they're they're yes, pretty accurate. There is the, the, so they, it was made or at least designed by the same company that did. I mean, it was um, Kupilov. Uh, uh, Shvetsov. It was Shvetsov. Oh, yeah, um, the engines. Uh, yeah, the ASH seventy three. And it was the seventy seventy three. Yes, uh, which hang on. Yes, uh, so. Yeah, eighteen cylinder air cooled. I'm having a look at the engine. The B twenty nine. Come on, where is it? It was an eighteen. So yes, it's looking like a cop copy of the duplex cyclone. Holy shit! Yeah. Have you, have you guys seen what happened to the later models? Holy shit! They kept oh, they this gave thing it, in service. Oh, they oh, gave yeah, it um yeah, yeah. turbo props. Like, yo, put that up on screen for a second. Yeah, yeah. One second. Let me let me find one here. I mean, it's basically it's um, it's what all the big bombers are based on today, basically. Yeah. All of the bears and the bad. A so turbo propped mm. B twenty nine that actually Even... looks kind of metal. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I want to see them make it like a full. What was it? Peacemaker style throw oh, a freaking yeah. jet on it. Too. it <laughs> Why not? It, they it turn it into jet. an AWAX. You're kidding. <laughs> no yeah. way. They got a lot of use out of it. And even the bear, the T ninety five bear, has some DNA from the uh, from the fuselage. And if you look at a bear, like the the fuselage itself, you can see it's got the same proportions to an extent as the B twenty nine. Oh, catch rotating engines for the win. Oh, so uh, yeah, that that is my uh, my second submission for uh, Sub Zero. Um, I'm gonna put this honestly. Up. I'm going to put this it's up on neat. screen for our viewers just temporarily. Oh, please do. Oh, my God. Oh, look at that. <laughs> look I kind of love it. Look at that. Oh, what no. What the fuck is that, man? Please <laughs> leave that up. That <laughs> needs to go into the car Oh, oh no, we did have... Oh, it's me, so perfect. Let me just... I'll operate on that in the background because that's got to go into Kamelka. That's amazing. I'm... I'm shocked and appalled, oh, but I love it. Look at that! Oh, now we developed an upgraded B29 as well. It was called the B50 with 
you know, uh, external tanks and uh, improved engines. I think it had turboprops as well. Even an end way refueling think... system as well, if I recall. That's right. That's Jeez. right. Yeah, I'll put that in a chat here. Bigger tail. It was a cool looking bomber. It just gets worse the longer I look at it. I know, it's, right? It's, it's, so it's like that. <laughs> it's like that. Uh, Thrasher Eight sent through in, in the Discord the other day. He sent through a photo of like, um, it was like a. AI art generated Lancaster, and it looked horrific. Yes. And, but the more I look at this, it's just worse. AI couldn't make that worse, really, could it? Oh, uh, God, but it's so cool, oh. though. Uh, bear with me for a sec. I'm just, it's going to disappear momentarily, but uh, the new one. Oh, it, 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 that, that, it looks, it looks not, like yeah. something out of Dick Dastardly and Muttley and their flying machines. It doesn't oh, yeah. look like it was meant. There she is. To so, it, it, yeah, it looks like a cartoon. We oh, had an early warning exactly version of the Beats Twenty Nine conceptualized as well. Sorry, it sorry. Like Snoopy sorry, might shoot it down. Right, that's going in Skamelka. Uh, 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 we'll what like, I really, what I really uh, love right. about it. Right, I, 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 I don't, like... I don't think, I don't, I don't think I've had one for a little while. Um, yeah, yeah. Here comes so the I'll be willing to go next. Um, I, I have two. I mean, I, I, we've had a few planes recently. Do, do, oh, do no, I do no, another no. plane or do I do my other thing? Do your other do, thing. Do, do your other thing. Your other thing. I do, do my other thing. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm guessing that pretty much everyone here has seen this in a picture. And, and probably a few of you know what it's supposed to do. But, you know, it just, oh, is it going to, oh, is, oh, it's not letting me drop it in. Oh, fuck. I had this problem. Just click on number two, then number three for the slides. Stick it in the... Yeah, stick it in the okay. chat. And I'll... Right, there we go. Right. Yes. There we go. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's... it. You know, we've all seen this. Surely. Surely you've seen this. I've got a slight delay on it updating. I'm, I'm, wait, I'm, wait, wait, I'm waiting yet. for it. I'm waiting for it. Wait for it. This is going to be good. It's going to be great. Oh, oh yes! <laughs> yes! The snow melting jet tanks! Oh, yes! yes! Oh, they're so cool! <laughs> uh, <laughs> comrade! It's 40k in act. We need to, we need to melt snow. We need to pop water, comrade. Oh, actually, no. No, this was not meant to put, uh, to... Oh. Emergency fire extinguisher for the right. Soviets' oil fields in the Caucasus. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here! What? Yeah, yeah. What you're looking at is the world's most ridiculous fire engine. Excellent, Dad. I like, love it. Every... It's like Warhammer 40k. Work. It's like well, Warhammer yeah, 40k, and work. Stalin <laughs> had a baby. <laughs> Yeah, it looks uh, just like a 40 Gentlemen, <laughs> Pac-Man da Pac Dad has arrived. He's going. You don't have any thoughts on the uh on the uh Soviet jet engine fire engine on a tank? Jet I, engine fire engine. That, the, tank, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what we're asking, but it's cool. How does that <laughs> supposed to work? Is it is, is it suck the oxygen out of the air? It, it blows it that... blows the fires out as far as I'm aware. It puts the yeah, fires out by Lord. spreading revolution. It, put, it puts the fires out by simply smothering them in enough glorious people's carbon dioxide. And what is that? A T fifty four chassis? Uh, uh, no, uh, I think it might. No, it's it's a T thirty four. No, it's a T fifty five. Fifty five. Oh, it, oh, it is a T fifty five. Never mind. Okay, I saw a picture of it from the back that made it vaguely look like a T thirty four, but never mind. Just, oh, it's it's that. so. Um, Actually, you know what? I'm making a, uh, uh, again. The general secretary is making an executive decision. <laughs> That's based. I'm sorry, the general. It's 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 sub zero. It's just so cool. <laughs> it's just so cool. We'll put the RBMK up on here. We'll put uh, the no, that's the wrong one. Uh, we don't want to move the flag. Yep. We gotta there we go. Gotta make it sort of like. Fit. Imagine, imagine being the guy. Who gets to sit in like that little turret back there <laughs> and Just be the guy who gets to point and fire that thing? Can you imagine, right? It's it's bushfire season in Australia. 
<laughs> fucking Dave from <laughs> from the local rural fire is he's driving up Goodbye. to this Goodbye. fire oh, in Sydney, Canberra. <laughs> he's fucking look what I found on eBay. Uh, you know, you know it'd be the same bloke who's. You know it's gonna be the same bloke who's gonna put cat mud guards on the fucking thing. You know, you just know. He's and a pair of do it. testicles hanging off the back of it, off the table. Uh, yeah. Um. <laughs> oh, it's Kate from incredible. Cooper Petty. Yeah. It's Davo. Oh. Davo's over here. He's got his fucking uh, jet engine. Uh, Get engine, he's gonna put out the fires. Uh, yeah. the, the best bit would be if he just had fuck off a full stick it on the side of it. <laughs> he's just gonna have full bogan with VB on there as well. Yeah, it's just full on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's big tag singlet as well. Yes, while he's sitting in a badger hole in Swindon somewhere, I'm gonna be putting out fires with my jet engine. Okay, hang <laughs> hang on, hang on. Okay, sorry, quick. Just, like, I've just sort of been stunlocked there. I know that, like, there's a lot of cities and towns in Australia, New Zealand, and America and Canada that take the names of cities and towns in the UK. Of all the ones to copy, of fucking all of them, to spiritually recre recreate, why the fuck would you pick Swindon? Oh, we've got, we've got everything. Um, uh, we have, uh, like, my city, Adelaide, for example, is... That one's a bit unique. In, in a lot of ways, but Melbourne's named after Lord Melbourne. Um, you've got right. Brisbane, S Sydney, Brisbane. You got we have Newcastle. Ah, uh, yes, and our Newcastle is the same as your Newcastle. It's yeah, pretty it's much weird. It's it's weird north, weird northeastern, or in your case, northwestern, but northeastern weirdos uh, injecting heroin um, and arguing about football. <laughs> Important question though: can, can, are, they, are they able to put a shirt on? Because our Newcastle no. lads no. are no. unable to put a shirt on. No, no, no. I've, I've yeah, had yeah. some of, I've some of the best nights out I've ever had have been in Newcastle. So, like, yes, it's weird, but it can be great. No, I, I, I love that too. Yeah, the problem is is how is how they all talk, and they even talk the same way here. With ours is. It's slowly getting gentrified, like all Sydney, like all Sydney adjacent places are, but. Yes, but uh, it is still Bogan Central in Newcastle, uh, for the same way it, in you in your place it's Newcastle. Uh. You know what's fun? That's great. <laughs> you know what's fun about uh, about accents here is most people don't peg Australians as having very different accents, but uh, people from Mister Pacman City speak weird. They yes. speak weird. We have a slight English accent. Though. And it's because Adelaide's the one town in Australia, the one major city that was founded as an upper caste posh colony and convicts weren't allowed. Exactly. Peasants. <laughs> Whereas <laughs> Newcastle was founded because convicts that were sent to Sydney who misbehaved too much couldn't be kept there anymore. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> it's the prison colony of the prison colony. Yes. Yes. <laughs> We also have another one. It's called Norfolk Island. <laughs> or Tassie, depending how bad you are. Yeah. Art so, Thrash, your is, turn. Yeah. Right. Oh, oh, yes, go there. oh, excellent. Okay, fine. Right. Okay. So I think we've, we've, we've had a good chat about a number of aircraft. I think it's time to go into heavy metal. Um, oh, so what I know about tanks could be written on the back of a postcard, but I do know a little bit about this one. Um, so this is the mighty Soviet era now modern russian era t80 tank um uh, so the, the, oh, okay. the t80 obviously so t72 been around for donkey's years they're looking for a replacement need to come up with something new do what they always do which is basically take a t72 and try and bolt some bits on it to make it better what they actually did in this particular instance is put a gas turbine in it um which was like seemed like a good idea because the americans had done it so genius mm -hmm. Um, and during the Chechen War, they rolled these things out. They were like, this is going to be fucking amazing. Watch this go. What they hadn't clocked is that people um, who go and join the Russian army not necessarily got the highest IQ. And um, if you leave a gas turbine turning over, it pretty much uses the same fuel as if you're accelerating uh, or reversing. Yep. So it just drains the fuel tanks. So these things would be breaking down about every five yards because they'd run out of fuel because they left them on whenever they were just sat there um, because starting them up is a bit of a bitch. 
So they basically drained the entire logistics chain behind the Russian army during the Chechen war. So one of the reasons that they were losing so badly is because they, all they could move was fuel enough to try and keep these things going. And it was bad enough they actually withdrew them from service. Guess where they're serving now? Of course, and, in Ukraine. And guess what fucking happened <laughs> the exact same time? Again. Same thing. So, so what you're thing. saying, yeah. what you're saying is... Putin is playing 7D chess to rid the Russian army of this bad equipment from the capitalist yes. pigs under Yeltsin. It's all making <laughs> sense now. Enough. It's all making sense now. And of course, it, it retains some of the key and important features for all Russian tank design in that um, it still has the autoloader in the back of it. So the tur that turret does like to eject itself. And I want to say they've lost 75% of the T-80s that they've deployed. I might actually so, be a bit higher than that. So what you're saying, uh, there's more so, airborne yeah. T-80s than SU-57s? Yes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, um, so, so to me, that's that's in so close because it it it, it does have a gun that works. Um, if it was if it was a complete failure, then it obviously would sit in sub zero. But um, close enough. That's interesting. I I think the T eighty was originally based on the T sixty four chassis, but I might be well, mistaken might be. on that. I don't, um, no, as I say, seventy two was claim, like claim. yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, so um, it, having, it looks having Soviet, a quick, I'm going to shoot at it. So. Ha having a quick gander, yeah, the very first prototypes in the development cycle of the T80 were T64s fitted with gas turbines. Uh, so, yes, I mean, this is. I'm sure there's, like, even if, you know, that was just to test the engine, I'm sure there's some other T64 in it because this is. You know, this is the Soviet Union where everything is just like a version of something from before, which is itself a version of something from before until you go back to World War Two, well, possibly you know, even before. One of those, so I'll take one of those over a T fourteen. Just careful, saying. Bin Man. If you say that too loud, we'll summon Red Effect. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, I I learned something recently. You may have seen when I like learned. I I mean, I learned something about the v2 engine that is you know has been developed over time into the engine that's in the in the t90 and t70 whatevers right i have learned something about it a feature that i presumed was only part of it in world war ii but no has been carried over to today and in fact made even worse this is like it's so fucking bizarre i'd have to give like a quick crash course in like engine dimensions, but okay. So when you're determining the, dis the displacement of an engine, there's two measurements that you look at. I mean, three, there is the number of cylinders. And then within those cylinders, what the bore and stroke are. The bore is how is the diameter of the cylinder, the circle, right? The stroke is how far up and down it goes. And so from that, you do basically, you just do the, equation of a cylinder to work out the volume of that times that by the number of cylinders that's your engine displacement great now you know you would assume uh that these sort of bore and stroke would be uniform throughout the whole engine so that every cylinder conrod crankshaft is the same obviously you would have and you would be correct yes you, you would be correct because not only does this make things easier to manufacture because you're just making the same part over and over again, you also, uh, it, it makes the engine more smooth because it allows each cylinder to balance itself out against another one. You know, when one's going down, another one's going up, um, cancels each other out. Fantastic. Everyone's happy. This was also why a lot of big engines back in the day for planes, tanks, etc., etc., were V12s because a V12 is an inherently very smooth and balanced engine layout. Which helps with a big engine because it helps it be smooth and not shake itself apart. But not the V2! Of course not! For whatever fucking reason that I cannot ascertain, I'm, I have a pretty good reason, I'll give that later, but there's no reason for this to have been retained. The stroke for the cylinders on one side of the V is longer than the stroke on the other side. Why? You said stroke. Because Soviet. <laughs> because like, no, literally. I, I am a, I am, a, I am a giga 
the engine nerd. I love this shit. I love getting into the nitty gritty details of like engine specs for like all sorts of minor things, like en- aero engines from World War Two, or like weird one-off car engines from something that a guy threw together in a shed in 1914. I love this shit. I love digging into it. I have never, I repeat, never seen a single engine with more than two cylinders where the stroke, well, more than one cylinder, where the stroke on one cylinder is more than the stroke on another. That is obscene. That is ridiculous. It gets rid of the whole point of having a V12 because one side of cylinders is going up and down further than the other side. So you have this inherent unbalance and the engine's rocking from side to side. And that's why, at least my guess as to why they can't make the V2 make more power because they can't make it rev high enough because it'll just shake itself apart because it's inherently lop-legged. One, literally, the best way I can put it, is the leg on the right side is longer than the leg on the left side. But you, comrade, you're missing point because when Yuri wants to make a nice antifreeze and motor oil cocktail, he just puts shaker on top of engine. Perfect. <laughs> in fairness, <laughs> in, 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 in fairness... The T the T eighty in to give the T eighty it's uh, just desserts. Yes, the, it had it had a gas turbine, not the V two. I just had to go on my V two rant. I'm very sorry. No, it's okay. But but, yeah. but, but I want to defend the T eighty a little bit because the weapon what? systems and the uh, technology on the T eighty were actually really really cool for the time. Like they had missiles. They had like the reflex missile. They had. Uh, one of the best rangefinders the Soviets ever equipped to a to a vehicle. They had a bunch of cool shit on the T eighty. Uh, it was going to be their flagship tank to finally compete with the West. And as you rightfully point out, it spent most of its time being a lawn ornament or being stolen by angry Ukrainians. Um, <laughs> be- because <laughs> because they run out of fuel. Uh, if if they I have a. <laughs> They they should have just put a normal engine in it. It would have been fine. The only problem is with all, that ex- with all that extra gear in it, it's too heavy, as we find out with the later models of the T90 and the T72. So, so one thing I will say is the T80 does look a bit too normal. Um, so I, I present something to bring us back to the insanity level. Now, oh no, this was described by Pravda as a victory of the utmost political importance. Mm-hmm. Oh god. I think I the K7. Go. Oh no. The K7 is one of the biggest aircraft ever built before the jet age. It has an unusual arrangement of six tractor engines on the wings <laughs> and a pusher engine at the rear. I can't see it yet. Where is it? It should be there now. Oh yes, it's this thing. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. It could carry 100 people. The, the... The glory of, well, I mean, I know this isn't it, but this will forever be sort of in the annals of history of being the subject of one of the early great Photoshop hoaxes. Yes. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, controversial take. Right? Controversial take. Sub zero. Sub- I think it's close. I, no, I it's, think it's, it's close because okay. it's so close to being good. It's so but low. it's just oh, been Sovieted too much. <laughs> it's like, oh, we I, don't have proper engine. Throw a tractor engine on it. Oh, they're I, not very I strong. Put another one in the back. I think it sits there because it is absolutely everything. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is yeah. everything. Yeah, that's fair. That's yeah, no, fair. I, I also, <laughs> I also, I also absolutely just find it ridiculous. Like. A plane, you know. I, I know. I know. Bombers can have bigger crews than like that than uh, than other planes. Uh, but nonetheless, just sort of scrolling down on Wikipedia and saying general characteristics: crew eleven. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's you, so you awesome. have to have ten crew and political commissar. It's very important. He's eleventh man. The, the best part is like all the big spots, and they had turrets with cannons and machine <laughs> yes. uh, yes, like like the, under the there engines. Is a tur- it, you, there's there's like little mounted machine guns you know, in a little <laughs> seat in in front of the <laughs> wheel, like on the fucking like fixed landing gear. Like, there's no way inside the main body of the plane 
from that. The plane just takes off and you're like the only thing you have is you're between two giant spinning propellers. <laughs> Sat in your <laughs> shitty little seat with like and you got one um, behind uh, you too. Yeah. Or she. It I, could be worse. Yeah, and and it hell. could be worse. You could be the gunner on a PE8 where you're literally hanging out the back of the engine sponsor. Yeah, there's that. There's uh, that. <laughs> like there is that. <laughs> like seriously though, it's so cool. It's so ridiculous. It's like it's. I love it in every way. It's the same as the early Sikorsky uh, monolith biplanes, you know, like the, uh, yeah, the yeah. murder mets. It's got the same energy. It's just same I, vibe, like big, strong well, plane, like stupid big, like yeah, like exactly. As deputy chairman of the Supreme Soviet Council here, I've elected that because it's quite big, it's going to sit in both so close and sub zero. Because we have to recognise that it was also complete dog shite. Oh, yeah, uh, it looks it, cool. Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, so was the uh, so was the big supersonic passenger swift jet, but we still love Whoa, it. Oh, don't you don't you talk <laughs> about my <laughs> baby like that? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Wait, hang on. Does that mean it's my turn? Yeah, I think it must be, mate. Must be, ladies, town, ladies and gentlemen. Oh no, kids! Just as a warning, I'm going to have to dash in about half an hour. Oh, that's so, fine. I have to take my kids. Yeah. I have to make sure the kids are in bed by then. Anyway. I have I have a PNG here, which I have simply titled. The Abomination. This is a machine that is so feared, so loathed and disgusted, so awful, so terrifying, it is quite possibly the worst thing ever made by anyone. Out with a pack. It inspires fear. And I have to and I have to ask you a simple question, chat. A simple, <laughs> simple question. Do you see torpedo boats? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you the Russian oh coal God. barge turned cruiser, the Russian ship Kamchatka. Look, okay, Kamchatka. the Kamchatka <laughs> goes in sub zero because without it, I would not have a YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm, yeah, that's that. That's, you just that's, stretch uh, it across, <laughs> like cut it in half, like cut the PNG in half, but like half of it in sub zero. What's <laughs> funny about Kevin Chapter is it just gets completely nuts, and like it, it, it nearly started with Russia, Sweden, Hang France, and Britain. That was, there we uh, go. Uh, that bit definitely. The <laughs> the, uh, the, the little the little. Whole barge that could. It's the first <laughs> part is it's a repair ship too, so it's got that dinky extra funnel in front of it for the workshop that's been bolted into the cargo oh, bay. Beautiful. Oh, all right, all right. It, it I got. I got to hear more about this pack. Uh, okay, go. it scored only. Okay, so this ship is responsible for more international incidences prior to the world first world war than any other single entity on planet Earth. Like, yes. This ship started no less than 12 different international incidents <laughs> because it would panic. It would panic thinking that it was encountering Japanese torpedo boats in the North Sea <laughs> and then start shooting at everyone. And the best the, part was... The only reason... <laughs> The only reason it didn't start World War One a decade early is because their gunnery was so bad they missed. And the best <laughs> part is Admiral Rossensvetsky nicknamed it the lecherous slut and had it <laughs> sail behind the flagship where he periodically threw binoculars at it. Yeah, like he literally <laughs> called it the lecherous slut and just... Like, it was not uncommon for the Admiral of the Second Pacific Squadron... To follow behind as I throw my seeing glasses at you. <laughs> oh, yeah. after, after he went to... Mad after they stopped in Madagascar, they got a pet parrot. And by the time they reached the Battle of Tsushima Strait, that parrot was able to swear fluently in Russian because... Roshidvensky would be on the back of the ship with this parrot on his shoulder, screaming invective at this ship. He did work as well. He did it with a big code megaphone. <laughs> like, yeah, he just yells at no. the back. He's just screaming. So so it wasn't... 
those that haven't quite clocked, this is, this is the great journey that the Russian fleet took from the Baltic coast to go all the way around to go and fight the Japanese um, in the Korean Korean encounter. Now, was it the Kamchatska when they finally got there that didn't spot the Japanese boats and said, hello, Russian vessel or whatever it yes. was? I'm pretty sure yes. it was. Yes. Yeah. So the one time there was actually an enemy in the area, it had been going around the world on this epic months-long cruise for which it was not designed. Half the crew were dead. Most of the shells have already been fired. They have shot at everything that moved, and they turn up against a Japanese destroyer in the dark mm-hmm. and message it and go, hello, fellow Russian vessel, at which point <laughs> the Japanese realise that the, the, the Russians are there and just annihilate them. Yeah, the, the best that, part, the best part like about that journey one. is it just keeps getting worse <laughs> the more you look into it. Like, the, freaking, the crew of the Aurora don't want to go to bed in Madagascar because they don't want to get eaten from all the animals aboard. Oh. Half the officers have STDs or are all hooked on opium at that point. The support, the meat <laughs> breaks up so they can't go for a swim because they throw all their meat overboard in a tropical harbour and oh wow sharks are here now yeah. it just keeps getting worse it's, which, it's one of those which, deals where it's like everybody on the, oh, and the, and the naked guy jumping around the decks just completely buck naked screaming do you fear death in people's face <laughs> literally <laughs> Literally, just like the nineteen hundred, the nineteen hundreds version of like the meme where people run up to you and go, "Nightmare, nightmare, nightmare, nightmare." Mm. <laughs> like, it's, oh, well, nightmare when they, nightmare, when they right? start the Dogger Bank incident, right in the UK, they, they think they're being boarded, so you just have all these Russian crewmen drunk running around the deck, firing pistols and everything, moving and swinging swords at them, while their crewmen who can't swim are laying dead on the deck, crying because they think they're going to die. The, fun, the funniest the, the thing was, which, which of the ships, which of the ships was it that bought a venomous snake as a pet and bit one of the commanding officers? That was the flagship. That was Russell Swetsky's flagship. It wrapped itself oh, around the second turret. And the, the people who made, <laughs> go ahead. The people who made the death of Stalin should totally do a movie on this. No, oh, they need to. Seriously, though, the greatest. Like, yeah, thing there, about there needs to be a black comedy about this. The absolutely. greatest yeah. thing. The greatest thing ever about it is the fact that they did have a pest problem on the flagship uh but they couldn't handle it the, but they couldn't handle it exactly because they got overrun they got overrun with over a thousand chameleons and they couldn't find them because they would crawl in between the fucking bulkheads and shit and then camouflage <laughs> about a month so after that Russell Spencer's chief of staff had a brain in- <laughs> Mad Potter God sends chat. down a plague of chameleons. <laughs> oh, Mad oh no, chat. what are we to do? Said, There's so many slow moving insect eating <laughs> lizards on the on the boat. Surely we are doomed. Complete of the devs throwing Nick Cage. I just saw that. Nick Cage, yes. <laughs> Mad Potter, Nick thank Cage you for that. So Honest to God. I tell you what. <laughs> The way you'd have to film that is you'd have to do it absolutely. You have to have just like the opening set, like something out of uh, Toro 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 or something, yeah, all really serious and formal. And then for it to just slowly decline and descend into complete <laughs> fart. Uh, well, that's the great thing about this story is it literally is that way. It, like, it was just the, like Kamchatka is, is the worst thing to ever happen on the high seas. It fired all of its ammunition twice before it even got to Tsushima. And I'm pretty sure it was more than twice. It, no, it, that's the... Well, I think it, it was three times. Yeah, you're right, because there was that time they almost started a war with Sweden by firing yeah. at them. Um, yeah, so they, they almost started a war with Sweden, Germany, Austria-Hungary, the Ottoman Empire, Spain, the Netherlands, I think Belgium? Anyway, so no, they, no, it was France. It was France. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. They pissed off every major country in Europe, and the only reason it didn't start a war is because they missed every shot. The only time they actually hit their target was during a training exercise, <laughs> and it was firing on a towed barge to practice their gunnery. They didn't hit the barge; they hit the ship towing it. Oh my god! And it's, so, it's how did you manage that? And Gentlemen, then, yo, incredible. if we ever get to the point where we can all make a living off of YouTube, we need to make this movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't you? This is a movie, right? We, we all need to, like, come together and, you know, we'll do, like, a Kickstarter or whatever. Well, this movie will be a thing. Oh, It'll be yes, hilarious. Uh, my, my rider is going to be quite impressive. I just... 
I, yeah, I, as much as I agree and uh, mimic this sentiment, I'm just worried how we're coming to manifest a plague of chameleon. <laughs> well, the thing is, you don't have to see them. <laughs> you, just, you just have to pretend they're there. <laughs> no, 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 I, I, no, 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 because I want one scene where, like, what someone opens a door, like, looks inside, and it's just a guy with, like, just being coated in chameleons. Yeah. And they're all just like, walking over, and he's just like, Previate. <laughs> uh, that's what we. That's what we've got Laser Pig for. That's his role. Yeah, that, that's, um, yeah, exactly. Oh, I feel like Laser Pig can make the perfect, perfect Ross Svensky. Yeah, actually, I think I, he, I, he, he would. He would. I, so, <laughs> like, so the the greatest thing about it is, um, there was only an, one other instance. There was only one other instance where Kamchatka hit the target, and that was the cruiser Aurora. And it was during a funeral service for one of the crew members aboard the flagship who died, and they were holding a gun salute, and Kamchatka loaded a live round and hit <laughs> Aurora. Oh, no. Yeah, I, I remember they, that one. I remember that one. I remember that. The, 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 the person that, the Aurora, that they killed, they killed someone on the Aurora. The person they killed was the fucking priest. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my this ship is oh. cursed. And yes, you're right. After that, they sail through the night and actual, as Drakinafel puts it in his telling of the story, actual real life, no jokes, no take backs, real life Japanese torpedo boats approach them. <laughs> Kemchatka signals them and warns them that Japanese ships may be in the area. <laughs> <laughs> Drak would have to be in the movie. Oh yeah! So if somebody's put that track needs to be part of this. He does absolutely. Need to yeah, this. absolutely. The bit I love about this whole series as well is you have it starts with the Russians going, hmm, "Well, we can't resupply our ships like the British do because we don't have bases everywhere, so we can put coal in their bedrooms." <laughs> what could go wrong? And so they all get wrong? black lung when they hit. And they all get black lung. It's a fuel air bomb the whole time. Oh. And then on top of that, you have Russell Svensky doing this. There's a rat. And one of the officers quite literally watches a rat jump from something to something else and goes, if that rat killed himself, I would be jealous. Jigitaville <laughs> 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 is the narrator. For me, he is the Jigitaville is the And then the fucking... <laughs> and then <laughs> Ross and Spensky's really chief of staff has a brain injury stuff went through it. I wonder why. Oh, I'd man. Imagine. Right, okay, let's oh, push on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, okay, uh, uh, I have something to say. Uh, that I think we need to talk about before uh, uh, Half Asher leaves. So I when look I leave, forward to I'll... you. Oh dear. What is it going to be? Oh, yes! Run the plan! Baby! Sub Zero! Oh, my no, golly. No. Sub Zero! No, not Sub Zero, it because if a wave hits it, it'll break in fucking half. But it's so it's cool! Sub fucking Zero. Look how cool that thing is. It's so Look how cool. fucking cool that is. They fitted anti-ship missiles to the combat planned version. It was going to have anti-ship missiles. It was going to like yes, but... sweep in and sink aircraft carriers and then sweep away again. No, it yeah. wouldn't. Uh, Fire it, lasers it, from its ass. It was amazing. It, 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 <laughs> it, it, would, it would die. It would die. But it's like it's snapping off. <laughs> But look how cool it is, though! Look how cool it is! You can't argue. It's, it's nothing but Sub-Zero. Come on. It's, it's, like, it's even just... got a funky tailplane that goes the wrong it way. What's not the way? Okay, it looks cool, but it's stupid. Okay, look. It's no it's, less stupid it is, it... than the fucking jet train. And the okay, jet train point. is epic as well. <laughs> okay, you, fair you point. You see the jet train and you're like, hell yeah, go on, Bin Man. Fight your corner. Let's go. Yes, no, like... A, a Krana plans are inherently very, very cool. Taking advantage of the sort of air cushion effects that you get when you fly very close to the ground. Uh, so, you know, uh, efficient, and you're able to have... I, I, I will say, the Lun class anti-ship variant is smaller than this, but it did get built Uh very late in the 80s, so, you know, towards the death of the Soviet Union, you know. Um, and, of course, their actual effectiveness in combat is uh, up for question. 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 Um, yeah. I'm gonna, but the, I'm gonna put it here. The, Casp the Caspian Sea Monster 
was uh, more so a proof of concept of the Akrana plan. Um, Can we put and... it in so close to Sub Zero, like the K Seven? Yeah. Okay. I, I'm. I'm gonna. I, I, so, but you know what? I'm gonna have the nose. I'm gonna have it touching tips with the uh, Yi, with the Yi One Five Five for the same reason. It's just epic. Oh hell yeah! Just epic as hell. Yes. So, <laughs> so the. But rather, usually, you know, if you think you're going to do a, a, a proof of concept, you know, the, the, the usually you, you, you scale down. You have sort of like a model, then you might move to like a half or quarter scale model that's like, you know, still has someone piloting it, but powered uh, just to sort of see if the principle works. Oh, uh, no, no, the Soviet Union took the approach that Okay, yeah, we'll do a proof of concept, so we'll build it as big as we possibly can first. That's just very simple. Uh, you can always scale it down afterwards. That's what you've got to remember. Is you can always yeah, scale you it can down. scale it down, and maybe, maybe you might find that you can build it even bigger, um, like a bigger one. Okay, I'm with you, Ben. Uh, man. I'm I'm going to use your I'm going to use your your entry to tape my own Ekranoplan entry on top of it, just because I feel like it needs to be said. Um, there was a competition between other design bureaus over Ekranoplan design, and the Beriev design bureau got involved. I was about to say, yeah, the, Ber the I, I, I was, all, I was thinking of t putting something from Beriev oh, in here. Yeah, the Beriev, yeah. the Beriev <laughs> is <laughs> insane. Look Hang at on, it. Still got the um, but the, the, the difference, there. the difference being, the difference being that the Beriev could actually like fly like a normal plane. Like this, this could fly at you know regular plane altitudes, not just like the the Caspian Sea really? monster that could skim along at like I don't know ten twenty meters off the off the surface of the ocean. Mm -hmm. Albeit oh. not very well. Oh, I've just thought of the best thing to add to this list. Well, look, I'll tell you what, but, uh, Marky, because we've got one Akrana plan, we're going to take the bigger Akrana plan off, and we're going to just accept that you know anything less than three hundred feet, which is the Caspian Sea monster's length. Is too small. Yep, that's, that's fair, enough. fair enough. Fair enough. But you still, uh, I, I had to put it up there so, because it's so cool. Did. Oh, I found a PNG pre-made. This was. I, I I'm not sure if this is still a, a record. Maybe the uh, maybe the uh, AN two two five broke it. Uh, but this is a you know a flying vehicle. I won't say plane because it's not, but. This was a vehicle that could levitate above the ground, violate the laws of gravity, with a maximum takeoff weight of 544,000 kilos. What My the fuck? God. Fucking A. Oh, God. Absolutely ridiculous. I... Yeah, so I, I don't know if the AN-225 broke that. But that might be the largest maximum takeoff weight for a flying vehicle. Hmm. Oh, it's, huh. it, the Akrano plan is just so cool. Oh, like ten, is... ten jet engines. Ten. Yeah, it, it's cool. It's very cool. I just... I, 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 the fact that it can be hit by a wave and snapped in half. Oh, okay, kind of adds to it, but still. Okay, so look, so all right, so if you're going to talk about maximum takeoff weights, let's talk about minimum takeoff weights. So uh, this, my boys and girls, is uh, obviously for those that know, this is the the uh, Yak thirty eight Harrier jump jet Soviet. Yes. Style. Um, okay. So, so <laughs> if this doesn't end up when in the calculus mm. fighting, <laughs> this was this was the Soviets' answer to only oh, look at those Sea Harriers. Those are really cool. So there's a thing called. Um, uh, the the red line, which was a, a KGB um, operation to steal information off the West, pretty constantly, um, really came into its own in the eighties. But in the sixties, when they were looking at trying to build something and they wanted to try and build a carrier, and we all know how well that went for them, um, <laughs> they needed some kind of jump jet capability. They thought so they developed this baby here. Um, its maximum takeoff weight is about eleven and a half thousand uh, pounds, which sounds reasonable. Um, Sorry, eleven and a half thousand kilograms. Um, the problem was that it's 
base weight was only 2,000 kilograms less than that. So including fuel um, and weapons and the pilots, it could basically fly about five miles. I mean, it literally, its range, I think its operational range was about 38 miles from the carrier that it flew on uh, when it had any weapons on board. It was just the shittest aircraft that's ever been conceived of in naval aviation. And I'm including the Seabix, which used to dive into the sea quite a lot. Um, it's it's also a death fucking trap. Bollicle. It's also a death oh, trap. Yeah, it's it's death, trap. Death, trap. It's death trap. death trap. Um, they crashed all the time. There no avionics on board. It could only carry the little tiny, I think they were the AFID missiles. Um, so yeah. even if it did, by some miracle, find something during its flight pattern, it was never going to hit it because it, the range on those missiles was tiny. And if it did yeah. hit it, the missile's warhead was only teeny, teeny, teeny tiny. And so it probably would maybe clip it a bit. But, you know, shoot down an incoming bomber about to destroy your, or a harpoon or something about to destroy your carrier, not a fucking chance. Um, and they wasted millions and millions and millions and millions of rubles on trying to get this thing to go so to me yeah the thing is it doesn't it doesn't have the rotating nozzle system of the of the harrier it's got the uh it's got the lift Lift fan it's got the lift fan which means with jets really which means not only is it a death trap because it didn't have any of the modern avionics in the western aircraft like the harrier to make it better to fly not only that, it can't even do all the cool shit that the Harrier can do. It can't even properly viff. If you tried to viff the thing, no. it would it would just crash. It would just explode. It just crash die. Yeah. I don't even think it can viff. Actually, come to think of it, uh, no, it, can't, no, no, uh, because, just, because the uh, the door would snap off mid flight. Yeah, it yeah. would. You'd, you'd be toast. Bad. Why, very bad. Why? Like this? It's again. It's, uh... The Soviets did do the same thing that the Australian government's done. Which is, they've done the half measures thing. They're like, we need an aircraft carrier. And they build one. And they realize they can't field an ocean-going Navy the same capacity as the United States. So they build this half carrier, half frigate thing with a missile VLS system on board and everything. And then they put these things on it because they can't actually fit proper jets. And they finally decide to build uh, proper carriers with proper, like, you know, ski jump, catapult, uh, correction, arrested... A recovery, all that cool shit, and we get uh, the Kuznetsov. Mm. Yeah. To be fair, because there's nothing fucking wrong with the Kuznetsov until the Russians had it. <laughs> well, you know what? I'll grant you that. Well, uh, I mean, the, the Chinese run, always, the Chinese you know. run there's just fine. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, I have a, I've just, I had a brainwave before you were talking about that, uh, the one before the plane, and uh, I present you all this. If you know, you know. <laughs> Wait for it to load. Oh, no. Wait for it to load. Come on, baby. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. yes. Man, look at it go. Okay, what's that? I have no idea. It's the Edward Soviet mood rocket. Oh, yes. It is 96 oh, yes. meters I love tall. This thing. It has dozens I... of engines on its lower stage. So many engines that the no. vibrations would make each engine turn each other off. It would blow up constantly. It's on video uh, exploding. I it's love just, my. Oh. I, I love a single rocket stage with thirty engines. It's I so love cool. this. What's his name? But Le- it's not Lysenko. What the, the fucking rocket engine designer? See Glushko. Glushko. Yeah. So basically, TLDR for those of you in chat: <laughs> Glushko and Koryolov, the two big guys behind the Soviet space program. They hated each other. They hated each other, and so. Kodilov and Glushko worked early on together. They they built the the big rocket, the R seven, the one that everyone uses and everyone knows, the iconic Soviet ICBM looking rocket yeah. that launched Soyuz and everything like that, right? One of the coolest rockets look at like looking rockets ever. It like, looks awesome. It looks epic. I had a toy one as part of an army men's set when I was young. Anyway, oh nice. The problem was they relied on that rocket to do literally everything. And then they build Saturn V in the US, and that just shits on literally anything anyone has ever built before. Saturn V rockets are probably one of the coolest things, if not the coolest thing, ever built by mankind. Anyway. Yeah. um, There you go. The Soviets... That's different from the The Soviets um, are trying to go to the moon. And the problem is, Koryolov and Glushko fall out spectacularly. They argue... Well, because they both, one wants to use a, um, like, Koryolov wants to, you know, build a sort of, what was it? It was like a, he wanted to test a new form of rocket technology. Like, transfer. Yeah, it was something new. Something new. And Glushko was like, 
No. I only want to build rockets this way. We're going with this new design over at my rocket factory. It's going to be 10 times better. When we go to the moon, we're going to use this completely new system. It's going to be great, but it's different from the one that Koryolov wanted to use. And they got into such a huge spat. The bureaucratic mess was so huge. The interpersonal rivalry was so big that eventually there was this massive collapse of trust between the rocket designers and the spaceship builders, the, the space guys, right? Koryolov's crew. And so the only thing that they could do to make their moon mission work was get all the existing technology they had and Kerbal space program the fuck out of it. They just bodged it all together. Aww. And so they had a, they had multiple stages of the same type of engine they'd been using forever and just followed the Scott Manley principle of add more booster. They just put That's another no engine. Yeah, no, 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 no. Engine, Because like, I'm pretty engine. sure... I'm pretty sure both the first, second, and third stages all use the exact same model of engine, <laughs> yeah. just with more of them. Yes. <laughs> more booster. And without modern um, computer and timing systems, they can't make them light at the same time. And, you know, Korolev dies at this point, too. Oh, yeah, he did, didn't he? Yes. Because, you know, he was, he, he was suffering from problems from the gulag. Yeah, you, you suffer from the gulag. So, so, so one of the, my, obviously, one of the big stories about the Apollo program, which is so cool, is that they built that massive building down in Houston to put the stages, stack them carefully one on top of another. The Soviets couldn't do that. So they, um, <laughs> they built this thing on its side, and then... Um, they kind of just seesawed it into place. I mean, I can't imagine how that could possibly go fucking wrong. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Like, there's there's footage of a uh, there's footage of a bloody um, Soviet uh, Russian uh, proton rocket. It takes off and then it does like a one eighty and dive straight back into the ground. And it's because some dickhead engineer has just gone. Hmm, the guidance system's not fitting. Hammer it in. Uh, it's upside down. Okay. Be fine. Be fine. <laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, say this to the person who asked us in chat. Uh, will Kerbal Space Program teach me things if I learn it? Yes, it's how I learn how to do physics. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Kerbal Space Program will teach you a lot, unironically, Will. It's actually really cool. It's fantastic. It's ge like genuinely, it's really cool. In fact, somebody has built the N1L3 in Kerbal and oh, yes. downloaded it. I'm so minded. Um, uh, and it's, so, um, it, 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 it if you guys want to go look at the. Look how many engines up, uh, this is. This is how rockets should be built. This is what we should do. <laughs> no, oh, you say no, that. No, the new Starship no, is built with more. Been achieved. The, the Starship. The Starship. The fucking SpaceX's new thing. I'm not crediting it to Musk because he's a fucking idiot. SpaceX deserves a lot more pro kudos than he does. Like, the new Starship is bigger than Saturn V, and it's two it's stages, boring. and it has around that many engines and they can all independently gimbal okay yeah. huh. I, which is pretty cool i guess oh. we're all of the opinion i i'm gonna say this publicly we're all of the opinion that uh uh we we are not big fans of mr elon emerald minor Muscovich? Part propagating piece of shit no we're not, we're no, not yeah. big fans of him. i mean minor yeah yeah i i i we're not we're not big fans uh but the engineers and technicians who work at SpaceX, and it's just damn good to see, for lack of a better term, it's damn good to see the good guys going to space again, right? Like, we're going yeah, to space yeah. again. Like, NASA, and with the help of SpaceX with the upcoming missions to the station, it's good, to, it's good that we're going to space again after the shuttle, after the end of the shuttle missions. It's so nice and refreshing. Thank and not God. having to rely on Soyuz launches. Uh, that was 11 years of pain. Uh, yeah. Fuck that, dude. But. Uh, just for yeah. context. So, just because it's always fun. Gentlemen. Gonna oh, wait a I minute, do need wait to split here in a few minutes. Wait a minute. Go on. No, I'll, 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 look, I'll just quickly throw up just, just for scale, because that's that's the Starship oh, on the right yeah. hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's size, right? And the end one is, is there, so oh, just wow. I mean, yeah. that Starship is can we, yeah, can we, uh, can And we, that can Starship we has the... gotten to space pretty much before. Yeah, can, can we, can we uh, get up the picture or, like, the video of uh, the... I can't remember whether it was Starship or Falcon Heavy or one of the SpaceX launches where it explodes mid-flight and they don't figure it out until five minutes later. 
Yes, I remember that. And no, Simon, we're not saying Elon is the good guy. We're saying that the engineers and people who are working on these rockets are the good guys. Elon's a fucking yes, they, they're like Elon's they're, just a they, playboy. They, he doesn't give a shit. People, people just want a job. You know, people, people need to get a job, and we shouldn't criticize unless you know, you know, like if if you're in like working on rockets is cool, and it's unfortunate that the only place to do that in uh, in current year America is to either get a job at Lockheed Martin or SpaceX. Or those are your two you options. can work for Bezos and go to Blue Origin. Fuck that. Actually, don't. Well, yeah, but, another yeah, option. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay yeah. Throw that is a third option, but that's again, that's you're sort of hammering home my point. I know. <laughs> really. Um, if you like rockets, if you like space. There is a there is a brand new program you're going to be very excited about, which is the massive nuclear rearmament that the US is about to go through. So there is an option for you if you want to do that. I I can't wait for the Ar- for the next Artemis launch. It's it's going to be so. Oh, it's I can't yeah. wait either. I, I will not no, lie no, to you, chat. When Artemis launched, I cried. I, I actually I so cried. Happy. I was in tears. I was like, yes! Finally! NASA missions! To the moon! Ugh. Uh, I, will, I will say that the uh, one thing regarding uh, SpaceX, it's how it's run. Again, it's not the fault of the engineers, but how they're run means that the rockets are failing a lot more than they should. Yes. Um, I mean, it's it's a testing logic, though. Their testing logic is, yeah, I think uh, it'll work. Throw uh, it up there. If it blows up, we'll figure it out. Exactly. And it's like, that's not the attitude you should be taking when it comes to, like, a big thing like, you know, the a, a rocket exploding midair, which could have all sorts of debris coming down. Even if it's into the ocean, that's what, what yet more trash in the ocean. I'm sure the fish yes, will appreciate that. If there's any me- members of the Admiralty listening now, then please do take note of what their man's just said when it comes to Trident. Um, <laughs> nice <and good> Trident. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, God. At the, at the moment, we're, we're deterring shoals of fish off the north coast of America, but we're not doing a lot else. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, but the... the It's... Oh, and what was that time when they, um, they uh, didn't build the launch pad properly? Uh, oh, that was so moronic. The first, yeah, the first start. Yeah. I didn't bother to put water in the launch pad, so it threw concrete straight up into the uh, straight up into the engines wow. of the starship, and it just detonated after it took off. Yep. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, we've got time, I think, for one more. Who wants to do? So, um, I'm probably going to dip out after this one, but um, hear me out on this. Um, I'm going to do a thing. This is not a real plane. Oh, 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 oh. Sub Zero. Sub Zero. Absolutely. The whole idea of the MiG 31 as portrayed in Firefox is highlight oh, of the God, boogeyman. It's a fake plane. Yeah, it, it. There was. The Soviet Union had a lot of mystery behind it during the Cold War, especially. There were a lot of things we didn't know about them. They had projects, you know, alluded to by Victor Belenka, who defected in the MiG-25. When he came over here, he mentioned a super MiG-25 in development. We knew the next plane after the MiG-29 was going to be the MiG-31. And in the early 1980s, we, cons- well, I guess late 70s at this point, you know, we conceptualized what it could be. You know, NATO was in an uproar about, you know, possibilities. And Craig Thomas, the author you know, wrote Firefox about espionage and all that fun stuff. But just, I wanted to put this here as a a sort of representation of the unknown that the Soviets had. Obviously, everything we've seen today, you know, very terrestrial, very normal things. But there was a time when we thought they had super weapons. Um, Like the the Ajax program, you know, that was that was a big, you know, potential threat to us um ajax is basically their equivalent of the aurora and uh yeah i i just wanted to throw that out there because no, totally, that totally alone totally had that. us spending money and if you if you uh if you want a wild time um and you can find it go and look at the um defense intelligence agency the dia uh world fact from 
the late 80s, 87, 88, where they used to publish every year what they thought the Soviets had and they'd send it out to Congress. It's now all declassified and you can see it. And just hmm. some of the shit they thought the Soviets had is wild. Like sure. you know, ABM system, laser guided ABM systems, which when they actually went and inspected the things on the ground, literally turned out to be painted onto the ground to make it look like they had something that they didn't have. And um, nuclear dead man switches where a nuclear weapon would go up and broadcast a launch sequence to all the rest of the Soviet missiles, exactly. which was a conceptual idea on a piece of paper that had never been built. And of course, it was an excuse then to go and get um, the MX missile uh, signed off by Congress and so on and so on and so on. It's great fun. Good times. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, today, you know, we, we have YouTubers speculating about, you know, what the SC-57 is like, and, you know, everybody and their mother is a defense analyst, but back in the Cold War, you know, things were, things were spooky, you know what I'm saying? Like, they didn't have war funders to guarantee them leaks. I, exactly! I, I'm, I'm just going to point out here that as someone who owns every single piece of available information on the SC-57 um, to the public. It's easier now. And probably some that I'm not supposed to have if I've dug around too much. Um, I will say this. I got a book. I got the book from your friend Gordon on the SC-57, and I'm reading it. It is very similar to Foxbat Syndrome in a lot of ways but it has all the problems of being designed and built in the Russian Federation and not the Soviet Union. Because, God, the SU-57, guys, I, I promise you it is coming, but after, I should say that after the success that I was really, I mean, I knew it was good, but I, di I didn't expect it to do that well. Uh, people have asked me for the horrible history of Russian fighter jets, so I am writing that now. Uh, but yeah, look, the SU-57 suffers from the fact that it's it's twenty years too late. To be honest, it's just not. It's. I say it, more than that. Uh, it's it's not the good. Interesting, the interesting thing about Soviet high tech machinery versus you know modern Russian machinery is that the Russians today will use anything they can get their hands on as propaganda tools. Whereas back in the Soviet days, they kept everything as secret as possible. And oh, yeah. that's what scared us. Yeah. The, um, the only, you would see uh, a play over to Mayday the, 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 and, I know, I know it's, it would be, inc it's incredibly cliche of me to say it or to liken it, but it really almost does feel like the um, modern day Russia is it's like the Imperium of Man, fucking Warhammer forty k, yeah. where they they're just sort of coasting on ancient technology uh, that was uh, developed, you know, uh, in some cases decades before. They're sort of raiding stockpiles because they've lost the ability to develop anything new. Well, that's just the Russian Navy in general. It's been the Russian Navy since 1991. Well, yeah, uh, yeah, yes, but, like, that's, you know, that's... I, I think it applies to other things outside the Navy as well, you know, like the... Oh, yeah. You know, we we, we, we point and laugh at, you know, these the uh, a lot of this, these jets and stuff, you know, but, you know, at the end of the day, at least half what they made worked you know actually we whereas need, we these should, days we should do a quick fire round there bin man i just noticed something we haven't got your obligatory larder up there where are you putting it so oh well, fuck for oh, that shit. I just... hang on okay well, well you can have uh, I'm, I'm gonna be dipping out here while so, he's doing um... while he's doing that okay, i'll quick fire right. put one in i'll put yeah, two up i'm just not sure, gonna comment on them so um i, I just want to say um it's very telling that we're using F-18s as SC-57 simulators, whereas we're using F-35s as J-20 simulators. Yeah. Yep. With yeah. that, I'm going to leave you guys for the night and uh, get a little bit more rest. Um, you guys have a great Bye, time. Thanks for having me. And um, I love you guys. Love you, love you guys. Have a good one. Later. Oh, oh, 
Oh, it's Concordski. It's Concordski. It's just yes. like, I, it's inexperimental because supersonic plane cool. It's there because yeah. supersonic Soviet plane piece of shit. And also the TU-104, because need I say more? I wrote a whole script on this, and I've got it ready to go, and it still sat there, Animarchy, for because we, we were going to do a thing, and we should totally pick it back up. Yeah, the Soviet mail plane of doom. <laughs> oh, hang on. What? We've got the TU-104 up there, I guess. And we're filling in the blanks. Go on, it, fill in the blanks, go on. We need to fill in the blanks. It's not up there, I promised yes. it would. Um. Well, I'll, I'll just sort of while while I am acquiring Lada, uh, oh. I will, I will uh, sort of continue the spiel I was I was going on maybe. Um, Sorry, mate. It's no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. Um, the yeah, it, it it in a sort of Imperium of Man way, it feels like Russia is coasting off of technologies and uh, stockpiles it made during the cold war um because it feels like it's lost the ability to develop anything new because like yeah we we make fun of you know like i mean even Konkordsky, for example you know yeah it's dog shit but we've got to bear in mind that they started developing it after concord and still managed to get it flying before concord you know yeah, imagine what they would have been able to do if they actually gave it the time and effort it deserved you know, that because the, uh, there was a French agent that was passing all of the details along to them whilst yeah, it was being built. Yeah. Unbelievably exactly. yeah. French of them. Um, but you know, like the the, the you know the uh, a, any number of other things. You know, um, they still they managed to get some stuff done, and some of that some stuff worked. Might even might even deign to say good in some cases but it was. it's it's you look at modern russia you know you look at the t-14 you look at the su-57 it's all a complete facade all they ha have they have lost the ability to develop this stuff whether that's I mean... through like you know and through the brain drain through lack of money, uh, put it down to whatever you will. They're, but they're not pulling. They're not pulling on whatever it was. Seventeen nations who are part of the Soviet Union yeah. who became independent exactly, countries. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that's why I said you know call, call it lack of funds from not having an empire to exploit anymore. Well, uh, you can engineering capability, right? You can really sum it up in yeah, the and, sense, and that, that, that's why I mentioned the brain drain as yeah. well. You know, like yeah. uh, as soon as the Russian engine very talented because like yeah the engineers who were a lot of the reason this stuff sucks isn't because the engineers were bad the engineers were fucking great it's just they were told and made to make something that was shit yeah you know, that's, soon, that's a point that as I've... soon as they were able as soon as they were able to leave and get the fuck out of russia they did and who can blame them yeah. that's a yeah, point yeah. that i've been alluding to in my entire russian naval series it's it's not that the ships are particularly bad <laughs> it's that they are so politicked that they can't be good and some people yes. have not have been a bit too thick to figure that out. Um, the, uh, uh, at the end of the day, Russia is not the Soviet Union, and it never will be. Nope. Uh, nah. Nope. It, it's a bit hard. It's a bit hard to uh, do all these cool things when your high technology sector, most of it based in Ukraine, uh, leaves the Soviet Union and becomes its own country. Which is, it's kind of amazing when you see all the uh, ex-Soviet industries and what happened to them uh, in the areas that they were in when they left the USSR. Like, Ukraine, in the current situation notwithstanding, after, after the wall came down and after they got their own country and in independence, Ukraine's defense sector and high technology sector actually, like, exploded. It was really, really strong. Like, Antonov is a big one. As is they also made Ukrainian engines. For, yeah, they also made engines for U.S. space uh, private space companies too. Well, oh, the stream has died. Oh, huh? sorry, man. I, apologies, it's, it's mine. I've got a dash, unfortunately, folks. Um, I, I do apologise. In which case, I will put this, this up. Is a stream Start streaming. 
Well, given the, okay, given the time, I should probably jump off as well, because I do have uh, my last week of corporate held starting tomorrow. Uh, in that case, I will quickly see if I can shoot off something uh, larder-shaped. Yes. Um, uh, seeing as it is uh, being demanded of me. You must um, present the larder. Present the It's not liking the copy and paste. There we go. There it is. Um, oh. So, yes, there's a number of things I can say. Hey, there it is. Yes. Uh, so, yes, it was, in fact, based on a Fiat, a Fiat 124. The myth is that uh, that was in exchange for large, amount of Soviet, large amounts of Soviet steel uh, that were then, uh, that Alfa Romeo then used to build the Alfa Sud, and that's why the Alfa Sud rusted. Uh, that is not true. The Alpha Suds rusted because the rust protection was done in a, in a factory that was right next to the fucking coast. Um, so lots of salt water got in underneath the rust-proof coating, and that's why the Alpha Suds rusted. Um, but anyway. There um, it is. That and, that, that and also they tried to use like an, an like anhydrous foam that also ended up actually trapping water. But, you know, anyway. Um so the larder itself, there's so many weird and wonderful derivatives of the larder. Uh, two uh, chief among my favorites are they made special police high-speed pursuit and uh, escort, like um, parade escort versions that had wankle rotaries in them. Bullshit. They put the funny triangle in the larder, really? They funny. put the left funny de spinning Dorito haha -ha funny engine in a larder, yes. I'm Chaps, I'm going to drop because I've got to come in kicked out of a room, but I will catch you later on. Thank you, folks. Really appreciate that. Yeah, thanks, right. Chat. See you next Have time. a good one. Good luck. I don't know. Um, Am I the only one, chat, who's ride or die for the, who's ride or die for the rotary? Because I'm ride or die for rotaries. Yeah, I, I, I do love a rotary. And strides have been made recently in making it better, but I do think there is a reason it hasn't become the standard. But I love it. I love it, you know, unconditionally. Was actually um, the point chat's asking, was it a Russian made rotary rank wankle rotary engine? It was made in Russia. Oh, we God. know fucking jack shit about it because they're <laughs> these like, you know, they were high high speed pursuit and escort versions exclusive to the KGB. So we know jack shit about them, about like what the actual Russian is. made KGB owned rotary and oh my lord, oh, um, oh. But it is um a uh, the, the the it is a two rotor one point three liter, which is suspiciously very close to the layout of Mazda's rotary. So. Maybe they did a little bit of uh, plagiarism, shall we say. But uh, I, I would not put that off the table. But it was, at the very least, made in Russia. They didn't, like, you know, import, import them. Uh, and I'm reading now, uh, it was uh, sold to the KGB for 52,000 rubles each. Oh, which... that's brilliant. Uh, which back in 1980, I presume, would have been quite a lot. That's quite a um, sum back then, yeah. Yes. Um, I might see if while I'm talking, I can do some sort of like in inflation uh, calculations. But anyway. Um, I'm trying and my other f favorite variant is the Lada VFTS. Uh, and what that is, is there was sort of like a, a small little... Uh, engineering firm in Estonia that was approached by Lada and saying, uh, look, we want to improve uh, Lada's prestige standing on the global stage. We want to, um, you know, because we're selling our cars in Europe, we're selling the Lada Reaver in Europe, but, um, you know, people know it's a cheap car. We want there to be sort of some level of excitement around it. So what excitement we want you to do <laughs> tiny little Estonian engineering firm, is we want you to turn it into a Group B rally car. 
a groupie rally larder. You're shitting me. I am not. Put it up. I've got to see this. Uh, I have got to see uh, this. Oh, hang on. It's not going to be a nice, uh, you know, PNG, but I will, I will get it. You need to get oh, one yeah. up just so uh, I can have the honor of putting it in Sub Zero. Yeah, you, know, you have to do it, but on that <laughs> bombshell, uh, to, to quote Top Gear, on that bombshell, I'm going to bed. All right. <laughs> it's dead Okay, so Wild oh, Big yes, Man fair is. Enough. Wild uh, Big Man Larder, is uh... Larder, Groupie Larder is loading. Is it there? There it is. Uh, oh, wait for it. Wait for it. Groupie I do want to see the Groupie Larder before I go. Groupie Larder, come on. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Where is it? It's not loading, man, man. Where's the group being? Oh, for you, you bloody PowerPoint. There, there Why aren't we is. using Google Docs? There it is. Look at it. Oh, it's amazing. I, I. Oh. <laughs> that is, that is something. That is incredible. That is actually so, incredible. <laughs> so, oh, no, no. Okay, I lied. It's, it wasn't uh, Estonia. Oh. Lithuania. It was Lithuania, not Estonia. Um, uh, but yeah, so Group B as far as Up Group zero. B cars go, as far as Group B cars go, this was slightly underwhelming. <laughs> I, I, I'm going um, to put the uh, Lada in so close because it was a it was a proletarian car for the people of the People's Republic. I feel like I feel like it should be dead center in the middle, like with the gas. Actually, you're right. Yeah, it should be right there, yeah. like. Yes. Drive my ladder up and down, speakers up and windows down. It exactly. Banging. But uh, good, good night. Um, the the oh, VFT yes, in particular, um, they I I am aware of this because uh, Skoda also had uh, some issues with this because Skoda were also trying to develop rally cars. Um, the Czech government wouldn't let Skoda import turbos to put on their rally cars. Uh, and if uh, the, ch the much more lenient Czech government didn't let Skoda do that, uh, you can imagine the struggle that a tiny little Lithuanian engineering firm would uh, have trying to convince the Soviet government to let it get some specially imported turbochargers. So it didn't have a turbocharger. Um, this engineering firm didn't have the monetary backing from Lada to develop a special um, fuel injection system. So uh, just sort of going back to the grand old stock tradition of slapping two uh, double choke Weber carbs on it. Um, and I don't think they even changed the displacement. They just got the largest engine that Lada put in the Reva. And yeah, just sort of did some tweaking to, I presume, the valve train and slapped some Weber carbs on it and up the compression ratio. Um, and the result is a larder with 160 horsepower that revs to 7,000 RPM. That's which incredible. Which is, yeah, no, I mean, gotta love that. Um, and they campaigned it, basically sort of trying. Um, uh, off and on from the early eight, from the early to the mid eighties, uh, they kept trying with it. Um, but uh, oh, oh, that's why that's why I was confused because uh, after Group B got cancelled, uh, they uh, yes, they tried started trying to uh, campaign uh, a different modified ladder in Group A. And that one was done by an Eston a different Estonian firm. That's why I thought it was Estonian, so I got confused. I'm not, I'm not so stupid that I think all the Baltic countries are the same. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to put something in here because people have constantly been bitching about it. It's a shit PNG. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I'm putting it in here for you because you're all complaining. So in the experimental to Smakalka section... May I present a Soviet RBMK reactor? <laughs> Which ah. we're going to put there. Right. Uh, Fantastic. Everyone's like, where is it? So there it is. A Soviet RBMK reactor. It can't explode. We are reliably informed it cannot explode. It is impossible for that to explode. Yes. No, of course. 
uh, and if it did explode, um, then it was uh, it was the stupid people who were working on its fault. Uh, the stupid, um, highly uh, <laughs> the st stupid, uh, highly trained nuclear engineers who are better than the West, um, who are f yeah far better uh, than anything the West can produce. Uh, the, the, those stupid people, it's their fault that the reactor exploded. Um, uh, blame them uh, and uh, just don't, don't, don't worry about it. Just don't worry about it. Yeah, don't, nah, don't worry about it. This man is delusional. Take him to the infirmary. What are we missing? We, I feel like I'm missing something, but I can't put my finger on what it is. We're looking pretty complete. Well, yeah, because like we could, I mean, like, you know, there is, like, you know... I'm slightly surprised that there isn't a single IS tank here. Yeah, so but, I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm, like, looking at the list, I'm, like, thinking, I feel like we're missing something. There is something... There's something missing here, and I'm trying to put... A, oh, I know what's missing! I know what's missing! We're gonna have to make... We're gonna have to make some room. We're gonna have to move the, uh, T-80 out of the way here. And we're gonna have to move this. We're gonna have to gonna have to move that we're gonna have to move this we're gonna make some room <sighs> yeah we're missing two things first off oh of course oh someone just said in chat okay i'm gonna wait for you to say something uh your thing and then uh i will say what someone just said something in, ch in chat well first things first we gotta have this bad boy Give me a PNG. Why the fuck did we choose to use Microsoft PowerPoint? Why didn't we use Google Docs? Google Docs is so much better. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. Uh... Oh, yes, of course. Just shoving the, 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 the lag three in dog shit. Of course. Oh, the Baran! <laughs> We've got to have the Baran here. There it is. It's riding the line between Sub Zero and So Close. Just because the Baran is so cool. Um, yes, it is a copy of a, of of a US shuttle, pretty straight up. But it did have a lot of cool it's features. Actually, not completely. Actually, not completely entirely. Um, the because the the engine layout is so different. The um. When the space shuttle took off, it was sort of you know the the sort of solid boosters and the space shuttle would act together because the space shuttle had its own massive fuck off engines. The Buran didn't. It had two quite small engines that were enough for it to sort of you know do maneuvers and stuff. But the sort of how the takeoff was sort of functioned. Was actually quite different from the uh, from the American space shuttle, uh, at least as 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 far as I'm aware. Um, so that's actually they're, they're not. It's not a complete copy. Is it another Concordsky situation where we just want to have what the American or slash the West have? Yes, but they did go about it slightly more their own way. Gonna put the Concordski there in so close because it was that it did actually see service as a high speed mail plane and it was really cool and it's yes. a supersonic <laughs> airliner, so that's just awesome. Um and finally I think the, the, the last thing we need to do is again people are uh asking for it. Uh where is it? Yeah, we're sort of running out of space. Yep, yep. Tracking that. Final reveal. What are we what are we dropping in there? Hold on. I need Give me a PNG, you bastard. There we go. 
Hang on, it's loading, it's loading. Because Microsoft PowerPoint sucks, it's so stupid. Stupid fucking, stupid fucking program. Um, there it is. And it's a chunker. There, yes, there we go. And typhoon. It, it's a class. chunker. The Typhoon class submarine. And I'm going to put it in so close and the arse end and experimental. Because it's so cool. It, it's just cool. I, uh, yeah, no, like Red, Red October. It's just instant, instant cool factor. I don't care. It, it's just massive. Like the, I know, I know the uh, sort of layout of having the uh, missiles in front of the sort of main control tower rather than behind is not very practical and doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But it results in it being just have, looking so unique. No other submarine looks like it, and it looks so cool. It does, and the fact of its size. The size of this oh, yes, lad. Yes, yes, it is. It's still the biggest, like, largest displacement submarine ever, surely. Yes, it, it um, is. It is. It's also the size of an... It's basically a similar size to an Essex-class aircraft carrier. It's fucking enormous. Like, if you look yeah, at no, the my... length... Well, how long is this thing? 175 meters long. That's like, that's like, um, even still sort of late dreadnought length. This is the length of like a 1910s battleship. That's ridiculous. It's yep. a submarine. It's a submarine. It's fucking massive. It's huge. It's enormous. And the, it... yeah, like, even a, 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 sur even a surface displacement of 23,000 tons. That's absurd. Oh, God. There, there's a reason why the TU-22M oh. backfire is not on this list, and the simple reason is there's no more room in Sub-Zero. We have reached our Sub-Zero. I... I... You say that. You say that. I started doing other stuff because I wanted to do the interesting things before people started leaving. I cropped out and made a transparent PMG of a TU-22M backfire. Uh, I have that saved right now, because I had it ready to go, and then people started leaving. Well, we might as well put it up. Put it in. We'll, we'll make some room. we got to make some room. We'll put the Kamchat kit here. And we'll make some room. Uh, I'm gonna make some room. I've just about managed to squeeze it in, I think. Gonna make some room. I've realized, I've realized why the Typhoon class looks so good. It's got muscle car proportions. Yo, you're right! It's like the really long bonnet, the short <laughs> boot. Yeah. yeah. It's got muscle car proportions. That's why it looks so cool. That's it. And there you go. The last entry on the Soviet cool wall after our rapid fire round to make sure we got everything on here. We have the TU-22M backfire. It's just fucking awesome. Right? No. I know absolutely nothing about the TU-22M. All I know is that it looks cool. Is there anything you can actually tell me about it? Um, I could tell you a number of things. The fact that it was specifically designed to uh, lob anti-ship cruise missiles at uh, US carrier groups. It was also designed to be, you know, insanely supersonic, quick boy. It can do low-level penetration missions, giggity, if it wants to. Uh, it can do a number of things, but there is one thing about it. There is one thing about it which I will put on screen for all y'all that makes it the greatest. Yeah. Is, it, is it the afterburning? It's the afterburners. Yes. I love a good afterburner. 
like a, a good afterburning shot is just is oh no, it's it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. takes off. Yeah. Take off. Oh, come on. Don't, don't keep there us they waiting. Are. There they are. Yes. 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 Blue yes. afterburners. Blue afterburners. Oh. It's it's yeah. uh yeah. it's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Like that. There's that is not just, just, just that ignore the fact that the U twenty two M guys. Just just uh, just ignore the fact that the tilt wing function probably was horribly unreliable and caused nightmares for the ground crew. We we can look past that. Yeah. That's... You want to know what's fucking crazy? The earlier models of this one before they removed it had a tail gunner. Yeah. He's sitting in a little uh, was that like the he's sitting in the a regular T U twenty two? He's sitting in a little pod over the engines. Yeah, no, yeah, the, the, the regular the the reg Ah The uh no, okay, no, I'm having a look at the T U the T U twenty two. Not the uh, not the T U twenty two M. And it's got like a tiny, tiny teensy little radar um for a remotely controlled rear gun. Fantastic. Yep. 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 It had a tail gun. It had a tail gun originally. Took it off. Oh. Because they're pussies. Because they're fucking pussies, that's why. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, anyway, yes. It has been uh, It has been a pleasure being on the podcast. Well, I guess like, if we do various cool walls for different countries, it might become a recurring series. Uh, maybe. Well, it, well, you never know. To be blunt, uh, everyone, uh, Thrash and I have talked about it. Yes, this is a recurring series once we can get everyone together. So, as, as, if, if, when we can assemble everyone, we're going to see if we can get the, the hog himself on the next one. We're going to see if we can get like a cool wall going for literally everything we can. This is for <laughs> Soviet shite, as uh, the uh, original title for it was. We're also probably going to. I'm. I, I would suggest American Aerospace next. Or like, all American things. And I think doing Team Freedom next time round would be the way to go. Because you for, all, enough, the, for, for all the major powers, you could do one. Actually, exactly. Given, given who makes up our our crew, I I feel like a best of British wall would actually probably be the better one um just so i can have a, see if i can get rex's hanger to come on <laughs> um <laughs> just to see if we can just to see if we can put on uh an obsessive amount of hawker hunters just all the hawker hunters in the world anyway ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for coming on uh we will see you all on the next time <laughs>